going on, ladies and gentlemen? What's going on, black family? Welcome to another episode of Melanated Thought, where we talk about things that affect the black community and beyond. I am Reggio. I am Mimi the Lady. And what a lovely lady she is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to get that out there. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, sorry about the long hiatus, people, but, you know, we've had a few things go on, you know. Family emergencies. Yeah, family emergencies. Uh, the whole like, care of. Yeah, but they've since then been resolved, and we're God good now. good all the time. Exactly. That's the way you got to look at it. Good. That's the way you got to look at it. But, uh. Hey, we're back, though. Yeah, we're back. We're back in full force, man. Glad to be back. There's been so much going on. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. So, but before we talk about what's going on now, how was your week, babe? It's been a little stressful, but I must admit, I'm I'm a trooper. I'm hanging in there, and with God's will, I'm going to be okay. All right. That's a good way to look at it. That was a good way to look at I it. I feel, so. feel good. feel real good. Okay, that's good. Every, you know, everybody's good. Everybody's good. Cool. Everybody's good. Just okay. keep us all in your prayers. Definitely, definitely. Keep us in your prayers. Definitely. definitely. So how was your week? Well, uh, well, you already know this. I told you before. My ticket queue was down. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to worry about too many tickets anymore. Unless I got to go out to the data center and do some work. Mm-hmm. But other than that, you know, it's been a pretty productive week. I mm-hmm. can't complain. Mm-hmm. So I've been over here all weekend long. So mm-hmm. which is a good thing. Definitely. So that's about it, man. I mean, you know, we just, you know, doing our thing. One day at a time. There you go. There you go. Because we're moving on up. Hello. <laughs> and we're back. We are back, y'all. We're back. We're back. We're going to try to make this more consistent. That's because you're so far from the mic. Do we sound good, y'all? Yeah, I know we sound good, man. Got us these new mics and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we got some new, we got some new equipment. Yeah, we got some, mm-hmm. new, we got some better mics. These are broadcasting mics, man. That's what I like about these mics, man. They're broadcasting the grade, and so you know, with, mm-hmm. with everything, I think the, the voices sound a little bit clearer. Yeah. Uh, there's a little bit of air going on, but that goes without saying. That's that's you know that's cool. We'll we'll, we'll get that adjusted later on. Okay. But uh, yeah, other than that. That's about all that's going on. So, hope everybody else had a productive week, black family. Absolutely. Uh, later on down the line, we're going to have an old schoolmate of mine call in because she has a very interesting story about something that happened not only to her son, mm-hmm. who is Native American, but also a cl- old classmate of ours, you know, whose son is half black. Mm. And it's definitely blatantly racist. She told me about this about a month and a half to two months ago. And mm-hmm. I said, that'd be a good story to tell on, on the uh, podcast. Mm-hmm. So if Roxanne, if you're listening, I'm going to open the phone lines a little bit later on so you can call in. And we will get your story out there because I think we need to hear it. So that's about it. And um, also, we're going to have another special guest. It's a regular guest. I haven't heard from her in a while. Uh, my mother. Mm, okay. Yeah, she. I'm going to have her. Well, I'll probably, I'll probably call her mm-hmm. so she can chime in and share some jewels of wisdom about the subject. Because the subject today is foundational Black American progress. SSDD. For those of you who don't know what SSDD means, it means the same shit, different day. Mm. I came up with this one. Me and. Uh, my lovely co-host slash fiance slash best friend were talking one night and we were talking about how black people's progress were like a hamster in the wheel. Yeah. And I thought that was an interesting concept mm-hmm. because I thought about that for a second when we were talking about it and I said, dang, you know what? She's absolutely right. It's like a hamster in the wheel. Mm-hmm. Same same situation, just same a situation. different group of people. Exactly. Just a different day. Exactly. A different era. Uh huh. And technically, instead of a hamster, it's the black culture. Exactly. And, and the brown culture, but mostly the black culture. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, you know, black the brown, brown culture, culture. got a hold their own nuts, but you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. No disrespect to my to my mm-hmm. Latino people. 
you know, I got a lot of love for them. You know, I, I got some good friends of Latinos. So, mm-hmm. you know, one of my best friends, he's from, uh, he's, he's from the Dominican Republic. His name is Emilio Trinidad. I got to give him a call. But, yeah, uh, that's my dude. He's Dominican. Mm-hmm. That's my brother. Love him to death. So, I don't have anything against Hispanics. But Hispanics got to hold their own nuts on this one. You got to take care of us first. Okay. I hear you. I see you. But anyway. FDA, baby. FDA. But anyway. Foundation of Black America. Yes, indeed, baby. That's what we got to do. We got we to gotta worry about our own. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we got a lot to cover. Mm-hmm. There has been so much going on. A lot. To be honest with you, I really don't know where to start. Exactly. And I know you don't know where to start. I don't. We really don't. There's been so much going on. Too much. Way too much. You should see her notes, y'all. They are all over the place. They are all over the place, literally. Mm-hmm. I mean, she probably got this notebook almost filled up. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Do you have any books for us this week? I know you got a new one in the mail. Yeah. It's a new, oh, it's, a, I, it's not really a new book. It's a new old book that I've had before. A new old book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, every time we do one of these shows, I already come up with books that every black person should read at least once in their lifetime. Mm-hmm. And I got quite a few. And uh, my f- partner in crime, Marvin Lewis, a.k.a. The Nasty Man, he came up with the concept of also coming up with some documentaries that would be mm-hmm. interesting as well. So mm-hmm. I got some of those too. But let's get the books out of the way first. The first book that I got is called Race Orthodoxy in the South and Other Aspects of the Negro Question, mm-hmm. written by Thomas P. Bailey. Now, this book right here is kind of like a hand manual for white supremacy. Mm. It really is. So if you actually read that book, you will see exactly that white supremacy is has read this book down to the letter. Mm. Really has. I mean, there's a white supremacist creed I'm going to read a little bit later on and you tell me and I will let the audience see that the it's not too far from what's going on right now Mm -hmm. at all so we'll check that so definitely check this book out if you're interested in it but this is definitely the white supremacist hand manual check it out Mm -hmm. second book it's called The Negro by W.E.B. Du Bois. Mm. Now, I read this book when I was in college. I did too. Oh, you did too? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very interesting read. Very historical. It's very um, emotional read. Yes, a very emotional read. Very much very so. Very emotional. Very much so. So, um, and I like W.E.B. Du Bois because mm-hmm. he was very prolific mm-hmm. during his era. Mm-hmm. Uh, between him and Carter G. Woodson, those were kind of like the leaders of that particular era. Mm-hmm. You know, Carter G. Woodson, who, uh, those of you who don't know, wrote uh, a really prolific book that I think that every black person should definitely have in the library, The Miseducation of the Negro. Mm-hmm. I know you read that one too, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, we all got to, we all got to get together and uh, know our history because we are the only culture in the United States that are forbidden to learn our history. Mm-hmm. And now we start trying to learn it, all of a sudden nobody really wants to learn it. Right. And so we got to get off of that. And oh, it's, be, it's so convoluted. Right, exactly. You know, so, right. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole lot. That, there, there's, there's a rich history there. People right. have to just sit down, knuckle down, and read about it. Definitely. So, anyway, that's another good one. Mm-hmm. And the next one I have is called The Dawning of the Apocalypse, The Roots of Slavery, White Supremacy, Settler Colonialism, and Capitalism in the Long 16th Century, Mm. written by Gerald Horn, another book that I read in college. Mm. This one is... I got. I had. I borrowed this from. A, I borrowed this book right here from a friend of mine in college. Mm-hmm. He let me read it, and I gave it back to him. And I ended up buying my own copy of it. And I've had it for. I've had it for decades. So, this book right here basically is another way of saying once you see that white man come up on your come up on your shores, that's another way of saying there goes a neighborhood. <laughs> The white man come up on the shores? When the white man come up on your shores, man, to sit to, to, to hand you a Bible, 
That's just another way of saying that goes in the neighborhood. When because they you're flip end that up. script, now they say when they see us back at the truck, time to move. <laughs> <laughs> that's messed up, ain't it? Yeah, they flipped the script, huh? They flipped the script on us yeah. big time. But that's pretty much what this book is all about. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get a chance to read that. Why oh, definitely read that. It's a good read, man. Yeah. It really is a good read. It's it's a small it's more of a historical it's it's a historical book also, but it also tells about how the white man comes in, not all white people, but just the white supremacists came into Africa, mm -hmm. robbed it blind. And then enslaved the people that were in charge, and put mm. and, and you know did whatever they're going to do, took whatever they wanted, and they're still taking whatever they want from Africa to this very day. Right. And um, did what they wanted to do. So mm -hmm. it's a good read. Definitely check that out. Okay. Now this next book, Blood in My Eye, mm. but written by George Jackson. Mm -hmm. Now for those of you who don't know who George Jackson is, George Jackson is the founder. Of the Black Guerrilla Mafia, mm. BLM, the BGM. I'm sorry, uh, the BGM, the Black Guerrilla Family. I'm sorry, Black Guerrilla Family. I'm sorry, I had it wrong all the way, all, all the way around. Yeah, the Black Guerrilla Family. He's the one that founded that particular group. Now, at first, in the beginnings, the Black Guerrilla Family was supposed to be kind of like an offshoot of the Black Panthers. Mm -hmm. They were a little bit more aggressive than the Black Panthers were. That's the only thing about them. And uh, the thing about George Jackson is that, is that I read the reason why I put him up here is because of the fact that George Jackson was put in prison for the rest of his life for stealing $70. Oh. Did he this, rob somebody for it? Or? Well, he was, yeah, he, he, he did rob somebody. Okay. But don't you think that's a little bit extreme? A life sentence for $70? Yeah, nobody got killed. Yeah, that sounds extreme. Yeah, it's very extreme. Unless he's been in trouble before and they're trying to make an well, example out of it. Well, even then, that's still extreme. Yeah, it is extreme. Yeah. So, and with him being who he was, he was killed, I say, about a week before this book was even published. Mm. Right after, not long after he wrote this book and completed it and had it published, he was killed during, this, during an escape attempt. Mm. And they targeted him out. I mean, it was him and two other people, but they definitely got him. They wanted to get him because he was raising too much of a noise while he was in prison because he was trying to unify because he was trying to unify the the, uh, the black prison population. They didn't want that. Right. They want to keep it segregated. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why they got him. But anyway, that's a good read too. Talks mm -hmm. about his life and how he came up with coming up with the Black Gorilla Family and all that good stuff. But it's a really good read. So but is that group still prevalent now? Yes. It is. Who is it run by now? Well, the Black Gorilla Family. Well, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty much it's pretty much a full flaw. It's full out game now, oh, as opposed to what it was originally. Okay. So. Okay. But yeah, they're still in existence right now to this very day. Wow. Hmm. Okay. All right, and then here's another one. Last one, y'all. The new slave ship, a ship, a ship that does not sail, written by Melvin Farmer. Mm. For those of you who don't know who Melvin Farmer is, Melvin Farmer is one of the original founders of the Crips. Mm. He was railroaded into going to prison. He got he got sent to prison for something he didn't do. And now he's a big advocate of prison reform. He was one of the first people, if not the first people, to get sent to jail during, before the three strikes rule. Mm. So he has some deep, deep insight on that whole three strikes rule situation. Okay. So definitely get this book if you are interested in this because I was interested in when I first heard about it. I read this book in the early 90s mm. and um, I thought it was an interesting read. So definitely get this book. It's a good one. Mm. Okay. So nice. that's the last book. So now let's get... Those are some good reads. Oh yeah, definitely, man. All those books are really good reads. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I would never tell you to read a book that I haven't read myself. I read, I've read all these. They're really good reads. I mean, she's read a couple of them herself. She yeah. said that'll write right here. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So, um, anyway, on to the documentaries. First documentary, 7 a.m. Jason Black did this one. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting one because it talks about how black people financially are always on the bottom rung of the ladder. Hmm. It's something that we all need to watch. Definitely. Mm hmm because black people ever since we've been quote unquote freed from slavery we are still owners and operators of one half or one percent of this nation's wealth and resources 
and that's not by accident, people. Mm. And that's in this movie, in this documentary, will definitely break it down for you like a fraction to let you know what's up with it. So if you haven't seen it, go get it. Mm. You won't be disappointed, I promise. Next one is uh, one of one of the uh, movies in a series of movies of uh, documentaries. I mean, Hidden Colors Four: The Religion of White Supremacy. Now, it's called the religion of white supremacy because white supremacy is kind of like a religion in a matter of speaking. And the reason why I say that is because a religion is what? It's a strong belief in something that's backed up by action. Right. Now, what is the biggest belief that's backed up by action in the world today? White supremacy. Because mm-hmm. it's global. It's not just here in the United States. It's everywhere. Right. Yeah. So, this is a good one. This mm-hmm. is a good one. Definitely check this one. Now, actually, check out all the Hidden Colors movies out by Tariq Nasheed. Those are really good. All of them are. And this last one is one that I introduced to this young lady over here. It's called Elementary Genocide. Mm-hmm. I had seen it before. And it opened her eyes to a whole bunch of different things, too. Mm-hmm. Because now she has a little bit more insight about how me and a couple of my friends think. Mm-hmm. Because it definitely breaks it down about how the the the, uh, the uh, school to prison pipeline is definitely real. Yeah, the part that got me when they said when a when a, a black young man is in the fourth or fifth grade and he can't read, very if he well. can't read, then they'll figure out how many prisons to build. Exactly. That is so sickening. I agree. That is sick. I agree. Instead of giving him tutoring, you pretty much throwing him in a future jail cell. Pretty much, man. Pretty much, Perfect. they have, they have no, they give, they give no f's. And I agree with what Big Mike said in there. He said the documentary is good, but what can we do though? Exactly, the only thing what we can, can do, be done. Yeah, which is why we're having this show, yeah. and that was the subject of the show. Yeah, and that's why they came up with that whole they concept. They all come together, yeah. Right, that's mm-hmm. why they came up with the whole concept of us being like hamsters in a wheel. Right. Because we've done several documents before, our show, some other people right. are having the same topics that we're talking about. Yep. But it's still happening. Yeah, it's going to keep happening too until we, do, until, some, until we do something about it because we can't depend on a dominant society to do it for us because they're not going to. Because they're benefiting from it. Yeah. I mean, because building prisons is big business. And like we mentioned on this podcast several times before, and you said last night, sweet thing, one of your first teachers is your mother and your father. Yeah. And we got to start teaching our children. We just can't rely on these teachers. No, we can't. Here, even in college, we can't rely on the professors. No. Nope. We still got to start teaching our children at home. I agree. Even with things that's going on in the world, y'all need to sit down at the dinner table and discuss them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because I can honestly tell you, and I'm going to get my mother on the phone not later on today. Mm-hmm. She will tell you that even when school was out, she always had my brain going. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's where I get it from now because this lady can tell you right now, my brain almost never shuts down. Right. I'm always doing something either creative or academic. And she can tell you that right now. Mm-hmm. Don't just take my word for it. She'll tell you. So, but, and she always had my 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 uh, academic stuff stimulated because I always had a book in my hand. Mm-hmm. She can tell you that. So, and um, I think that is what's missing because instead of looking at your child two and three years old twerking her imagination mm. and you laughing about it thinking Mm-mm. it's cute put a Mm-mm. book in their hand Mm-mm. and stop I mean even though your son got a good jump shot okay cool put a book in his hand after it gets finished mm-hmm. it's that simple you know we have to teach our youth and yeah, people do realize there is an expiration date in sports exactly there's an expiration date in music yep Acting, everything. But there are some nice ones out there that's older. Cause like we looked at the movie the other night with Morgan Freeman. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep, that's true. You know, so you know, it, it, it's it, it's blessed upon certain ones. But yep. you know, you just can't think. Okay, I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life. You have you going there anticipating that, but it don't always ends up. Like that's why you gotta have that knowledge behind it. Yeah. So you can get out there and, and give you another stream of income. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. Just, just can't bank on just one thing because, to be honest with you, you're good, you're lucky if you get three to five good albums out of you. Yeah, definitely. I've heard several, several singers and rappers say that very same thing. Yeah. You're lucky if you get three, maybe five good albums out of you. And I, once I heard, that's it. Yeah, I heard um, 
when El uh, Cool J, you know, I love El Cool J, and they call him the goat. And I'm like, what does goat mean? Great as of all time. time. And he said when it was when he was getting up to that tenth album, mm -hmm. he was like, man, it's, he said he thought it would got have gotten easier for him, but it got harder. Even though he had the music in his heart. It was easy. It was harder to like compete with what was out there. Did he, was he going to sell? Was anybody going to buy his music? Because he's already been in the game for so long. So you got to keep yourself, um, what is it, up to date, revised, hot. Here. You know, you got to keep yourself out there in the mainstream so people can know where you are, what you're doing. Right. I mean that. That and, and that's, that's that's what that's what I was talking about because like with the changing times, mm -hmm. that's a good way. Yeah, changing. Yeah, time. the changing times. You can't mm -hmm. really keep up with some of these cats out here, mm -hmm. and that's part of the problem. So you know you got you got to do something else besides what you're doing, mm -hmm. which is why Ludacris. Even though I love Luda, mm -hmm. I love Luda. He's acting now. That's why I just said like even though El had he got to that stagnant, he went into acting. Right. And now he's hosting. You know, mm -hmm. so he has other. Uh, the way he said it was getting difficult for him to continue to put out an album, so. Precisely. Yeah, same thing with Luda. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how a lot, you know, resting people, we're going to talk about him later, but the same thing with DMX. Yes, indeed. Same thing with him, so. Yeah, you got to keep that going, but I thought, yeah, that documentary was a very good documentary. Mm -hmm. I and I just want to say for black boys, black girls too. Definitely black girls. Black girls too. Yeah, yes. it's not just for black boys, it's, it's for black girls. Yeah, they, but they, they the, coming down on us hard. Exactly. Us too. I mean, even though the elementary genocide is mainly focused on black boys mm -hmm. and black men in general, mm -hmm. is for black girls too. Right. Because eventually they're going to get married, have sons of their own. Mm -hmm. They got to pay attention to that. That's number one. Yeah. And number two, it doesn't just stop at the black boys. Mm -hmm. Because they're getting black girls too. Because mm -hmm. I know a bunch, of, I know, I'm not going to say I know a bunch, I know quite a few black girls that can't read on a fifth grade level. Mm -hmm. And they're our age and older. Wow. Mm. And some of them have been in trouble with the law. Mm -hmm. On more than one occasion, I might add. So so that, okay, so that begs the question: Is that lack of what attention at home? Could be. Or did the school system fail them? Both. Okay. It's both. It, it works in both ways. Because, like we just said, mm -hmm. you know, the first teacher in the home are the parents. Mm -hmm. But then the parents send them on to the school uh -huh. to get that basic. Yep. And then they still don't even grasp the basic if you can't read. No, they don't because they because some a lot of times, especially now, that's why I pride myself on saying that I went to a country school because mm -hmm. that because during that time um, the classes were small mm -hmm. and we could we could get that individualized attention mm -hmm. you know what I mean so that's why I that, that's why I like going to that small country school that I went to mm -hmm. it wasn't very big but hey I did pretty good now that you said it it's the opposite for me because I went to a country school too right and when I was in the sixth grade, I couldn't even multiply. Really? Yeah. And then my parents, we moved here. And, yeah, I just when everything started going better for me. Uh -huh. And then it picked up lightning speed. And that's how I was able to graduate early. But, yeah, down in the small town, I was... You was behind the curve. I was behind, I was behind the eight ball. <laughs> <laughs> I was behind the curve, the whole ball. Oh uh, no, she's behind the whole yeah, ball. The whole eight ball. <laughs> so y'all can even multiply in the sixth grade. Oh man! But then right. now I love numbers to death. Yeah, yeah. she's an accountant. Yeah, I do. And a damn good one too. See, that's a difference. It's, yeah, okay, okay. I see what you're saying. I guess it just depends on the. I guess it depends on the environment. The district. I, I guess so. And the I guess so because the attention the teacher can have. Anyway, it was a class, a small class for me too, but. I don't know if it was just me, maybe I couldn't learn, no, I couldn't learn because I picked it up here, but I guess it just depends on the situation. Right. But first and foremost, it has to start at home. It starts at home. Yeah, it definitely starts at yeah. home, so, you know. Like, I could blame my parents, but I'm not going to do that because they were here. Right. And I was there in the country, so, mm -hmm. yeah. No, you can't blame your parents. Mm-mm. Mm so, but. Follow me. But anyway, that's <laughs> those are the documentaries we got and all that Very good stuff. Very good. Love so, that. Yeah, Love that was some good ones, man, mm -hmm. so. Okay, y'all, here we go. Well, let's just go ahead and, um, so we, we talked about this young man earlier and get some RIPs right now. The first yeah. was DMX. We've mentioned him before. Yeah. But they finally had his funeral. Mm -hmm. I looked at it. I missed it. I hate that. 
very emotional. Because you had called me, asked me that I watch it. Yeah. And I said, no, nah, I wasn't watching it. I didn't think it was even on. Yeah, they was on BET, which I was surprised. Oh, and they broadcast the whole thing. It was almost six hours. And I looked at all of it. I was very, I don't know if I want to say inspired, but I was I was made aware of some things I didn't know about him. Several speakers that was at the front and stood up and called him a prophet. Right. And I just, I guess, once I started listening to some of his music, and if you think about it, every album that he had, he did have some type of prayer on there. Right. So I guess in some sorts, he was a prophet. Yeah. Do you agree with that? I agree. Okay. Definitely, man, yeah. because um, like much like Tupac, he has something to say in his music. Mm -hmm. But the main thing that people always focus on was the street stuff. Right. I mean, he had a bunch of stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Just It's the same thing with Tupac. I mean, they know Tupac for California love. Ambition. That's my jam right there. Now, <laughs> he had also yeah. had things like Dear Mama yeah. that didn't get nowhere near as many accolades. And the one we talked about, Brenda got a baby. Brenda's got, yeah, yeah. Brenda's got a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I ain't mad at you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know he he had they had hits man. Uh, right. Other than they had they had some jewels other than what people would recognize him for. Right, like DMX. Whoa, I mean no no no. Well, that's a black guy yeah. who also passed away. Another another one. Rest but, uh, DMX said party up. Party, party up. up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But his room was very very inspirational. And like we just said, black black Rob passed away. Yep. R.I.P. And then also Shock G. From Digital Underground. And I love Digital Underground, I man. You know, the hoop dance with the jam. I'm about to run this <laughs> I like this song. Man, I can remember when the Humpy, I can remember when Digital Underground first came out. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a, I was a DJ. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times what happens with DJs, we get into the what these called these record pools. Mm -hmm. And they will send us free promos of certain music. Mm -hmm. I remember this like it was yesterday. I got the Digital Underground 12 inch. Mm -hmm. I cracked it open. And it was Do What You Like. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. And I played that. I'm like, okay, this is kind of hot. And on the flip side was Humpty Dance. Mm -hmm. I said, this is going to be a hit right here. Because mm -hmm. when I played it at the club I was DJing at, they went bananas when I played it. Yeah. So I got in the flow trying to do the hump today. Exactly. So man, how you do it? I said, I don't know just yet. This is a promo copy, so y'all guess you gotta pay attention and watch. And right. so once Digital Underground dropped their album Sex Packets, which was a good album by the way, mm -hmm. um, the video came out to do to do to uh, do what you like, and not too long after that, the Humpty Dance came out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so everybody was like, "All right." So you know, when I started playing the Humpty Dance, everybody got there doing the Humpty Dance, so I thought mm -hmm. that was kind of cool. I told people it was going to be a hit, yeah. so and it was definitely a hit. All right. So let's repeat to those gentlemen and anybody else we missed in between, but we're losing a lot of we're losing a lot of good entertainers. Man, yeah, it's been a, quite a few of them going yeah. on, man. Yeah, back to back. Back to back to back. And yeah. speaking of entertainment, you got an interesting story. Yeah, I, I want to give kudos to two of our current rappers. Even though we give, with some people, give rappers a bad name. But I want to give a shout out to Young Thug and Gunna. Mm -hmm. These are some young men mm -hmm. who took their own money and posted bail for more than 30 inmates. Right. And I think that was, I just I just wanted us to speak on it, if not for two seconds, I just want to put it in the atmosphere that sometimes they do do the right thing. Oh yeah. In the words of Spike Lee. <laughs> oh yeah. I never said they didn't. I yeah. mean, me personally, I've always had, being a, a semi-retired rapper myself, mm -hmm. I've always been more inclined to give rappers and hip-hop in general as props. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to see a fair friend. Like I said, I don't understand why they always talking about women, drugs, sex, that's cars, flight, I know why they do trips. It. I know why they do it. <laughs> I know why they do it. Because why? Right. It's what sells. Because yeah. the record exec will sit up here and tell you, okay, you got the contract, so this is what you're going to do. This is what I want you to talk about. This is what's selling records. You know what? I wonder, because I've, I've barely heard about this story. Let me tell you, it happened in... Um, Atlanta Fulton County Jail in mm -hmm. Georgia. So when I read this story, I'm like, wow, I didn't really see it on any news station. That was got me, you know. So that's why I think we need to speak on this. Let them know there are still some young men 
out there. They do have all the jewels on. Don't get me wrong. They got the right, the gold to diamonds flashing. Uh -huh. But they went down there to the jail and got some people out. So kudos to those gentlemen. Oh, yeah, no Young man. Thug and Gun. I like Young Thug. I heard a couple of his songs. Uh, Just a couple. Uh, but I, I like it. I never though, heard of Gunner. Even though I'm not a fan of either one of those, mm -hmm. those guys as mm -hmm. far as the music is concerned. Mm -hmm. Because of, you know, whatever reason. But I can applaud them for doing what they did. Mm -hmm. Because it's like you said, you know, these younger cats are getting a really bad rap. No pun mm -hmm. intended. Yeah. But they really are. Yes. Yeah. So for them to come out and do their thing and and make and, and, and do that, do do what they did. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. Cause like I said, you don't know what somebody's been through. And from my understanding, some of the people that they got out have been in jail for like three or four years that they couldn't right. afford to get out. Right. So I like I said again, kudos to these young men. Oh, yeah, let's give them a hand clap. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah let's give yeah, them a hand clap. Cause, you know, we talk about the bad ones, let's talk about the good ones. Oh yeah, exactly. Hey, exactly. Okay. Hey, exactly. So moving on, let's see. Um, whew, where do I start? Moving right along. But well, let me start with my girl. Let me go ahead and give kudos to my girl. I don't know if you guys learned it, uh, heard about it or not, but my girl Stacey Abrams is going to be nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Woo! Girl power, girl power, black girl magic, black girl magic. Everybody know I have a woman's crush on Stacey Abrams. And Miss Abrams has been no nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Okay. Um, she, of course, is a U.S. voting rights activist and Democratic Party politician. Stacey Abrams has been nominated for this year's Nobel Peace Prize for her work to promote nonviolent change via the ballot box. Okay. Of course, she's kind of stepping into the shoes of Dr. King. Uh -huh. he, he fought for the same rights for us. Oh, yeah. But I I'm just so proud of her. I just... When I read this story, I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Well, you know, I don't, I don't really have anything against Stacey Abrams mm -hmm. per se. I mean, I just think that when it came to those, when it came to those votes over there in Georgia, mm -hmm. she did exactly what her, what her white paymasters and handlers told her to do: go out there and get those niggas there out there that get, get in the polls. <laughs> so that's pretty much what she did. You know, I'm, like mm -hmm. I said, again, again, I'm not mad at her. I get props where props is due. She did mm -hmm. her thing. So you know. More power to her. Mm -hmm. You know. But I know, like I said, I want to give her kudos because you don't really hear about that much. And for her to be nominated, I really don't like the class of people that she's getting nominated with. Yeah. Donald Trump. Who the hell? Hold mm -hmm. on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Mm -hmm. What? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Donald Trump. But here's the kicker. His son, Kreshner, Keshner, his son-in-law, he's getting us eliminated for what has he done? Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to leave it to her. I'm proud of Stacey. Kudos to her. She deserves it. I'm not sure about the other two, but I know she definitely does. So okay. let's keep her prayed up that everything goes good for her. Hey, I'm a man, man. I mean, you know, ain't no power to him. So, you know, mm -hmm. but I really, I can't believe Donald Trump is up for any kind of award. Right. That's to be, that's <laughs> Especially a Nobel Peace Prize. A yeah. Nobel Peace Prize. Ain't nothing peaceful about that's that. That's just man. like giving anybody a, a one of those Hollywood Walk of Fame. Anybody can you get one. You might as give Adolf Hitler the Nobel <laughs> Peace Prize. You're going to give him one. Right. Come on, man. <laughs> Well, now let's go to the, you know, we always start with the local fronts. So let's start in Oklahoma. My home state. Your home state. An Oklahoma teacher called student the N-word during bizarre altercation, and it's caught on video. Now let me read this little synopsis that she did. In the video, the teacher can be seen holding on to the student's backpack. The student's arms up near his head. In the video, after the student broke free, he said, watch where you touch me, to which the, the teacher replied, you better get yourself over there, nigga. Do it. <coughs> Ooh. Now, Mr. Oklahoma. Which part of Oklahoma is this in? You Oki? Aren't you Oki? Yes, I am. <laughs> Proud. Which part of Oklahoma was this in? Um, mm. This was in the Haddonville School District. Nothing but white people. Oh, nothing but white people. Okay. Pretty well, this much. Is, this is a black student. Pretty so. much. It's a black student. I mean, you got a, you got a few black people sprinkled here, there, and around mm -hmm. the room. But there's mostly white people there. 
Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what I know. It's mostly white people in that particular part of Oklahoma. Okay, you know where that is? I know where it's at. Okay. Yeah, I know exactly where it's at. Oh, hey. So, yeah, man, it's nothing but white people there, so mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. I'm oh, sorry, no, it's called Holden, sorry, Holdenville. Oh, man, yeah, yeah. Holdenville, Oklahoma. Yeah. Holdenville. I'm sorry, Holdenville. my apologies. Yeah, Holdenville. 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 I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, yeah, Holdenville is nothing but white people, so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not surprised at all. So this probably just in her normal vocabulary. It's probably the way she does. Yeah, yeah. She, she, like she talks like that all the time. She was just whole. She. <laughs> she was like, good morning. <laughs> well, you know, here's here's the thing about it. Here's the thing about it, and you know this to be true. Uh huh. My grandfather told me a long time ago, three kinds of people tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Children, mm -hmm. drunks, mm -hmm. and people that are pissed off. That's right. She was pissed off. Catch me mad. You heard a whole bunch of stuff. And another thing. And remember back in 2002. She ain't lying. <laughs> she ain't lying. Trust me. She is not yeah, lying. So, hey, you're right. Those are the three. Yep. Top three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> She's always thought like that. And she knows she has. I mean, you know, it just came out. Just to say, you better get yourself over there, nigga. I mean, yep. Okay, would it have been worse? She said, you better get yourself over there, boy. Well, it would have been just as bad, but yeah. it wouldn't have had the impact that it had. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but his parents and a lot of other ways, the parents want her out of the, out of the class and they want to get her fired. I can't say I blame them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said before on the podcast before. These teachers, these kids, they don't have a chance. If the teachers are talking like that, you know? And then here in my home state of Texas. I'm gonna go ahead and bow my head on this one because I was oh, a little damn. I was a little appalled by this story. Oh damn. A Texas high school held a quote unquote nigger auction <laughs> for black classmates. <laughs> yeah, black uh, nigger auction. <laughs> And it's a school district in uh, North, it's um, Alito, Alito County School District. And <laughs> what, made me, what got me about this story is the kids thought it was funny. And they was having a slave trade day. And, an, and they all had the niggas on a, I'm sorry, had all the black students on a nigger form. And they was beating on the students one by one of what they had and what they possessed. And one of the students said, well, I want him. I'm going to bid $100 on him because I like that he has good hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 White people. Mm-hmm. And then you brought to their attention. They were like, what? We were just having fun. That's what they always now, say. Now, these are students. That's, what do you still learn this? That, that is what they always say. Mm -hmm. They always say, whenever you catch one of them up like that, doing some stupid shit like that, the first thing they're going to say is, oh, I was just joking. Mm -hmm. It was all in fun. No, 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 no. See, here is my question about this whole situation. How come the black students didn't say something about this? They did. I'm talking about the ones that participated. That's what I want to know. So I'm thinking, did they not know what they were lining up for? Maybe they didn't know what they were lining up for. So the story wasn't really clear. It's just like they was all together. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not funny. It was like they were all together. And all of a sudden, they said, we have a nigger auction for the black classmates. So obviously, this is this is me and my little mind. Alito is far out, you know. And I'm thinking, like you said earlier, it's probably not too many black students there. And they said, well, for today, we're going to have a nigger auction. So let's line up all 20, 25 students and let's bid on them to see who can get the best one. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. <sighs> okay. All right, all right, all right. Now, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around this because when you sent me that story, mm -hmm. I'm looking at, I'm like, this, this, this can't be real. They're actually having an auction mm -hmm. to sell black people. Mm -hmm. Well, a mock auction, but mm -hmm. still, that's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. They're having a mock auction to sell black people at a school. Mm -hmm. The school board didn't have anything to say about this. Well, they did. That's the other question. Afterwards, they did. Of course, afterwards, afterwards they did. Mm -hmm. Which means they've done this before. The only reason why somebody says something now because somebody had an issue with it. <laughs> they've done it before, obviously. 
Well, here's one of the things. One of the students, I told you about the student said he wanted to bid $100 because the student had good hair. Another student said, well, I'm just going to bid $1 on him because his name is Chris. And his hair is not that good looking. And then another student wanted to bid a couple of dollars on another student because they liked the way his name was. His name was Avon. So we're just making up dumb, dumb reasons to bid. I thought maybe they were athletic or smart or... No, they're just looking at the way they look and what they possessed. Now, now, hold on, hold mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Now, let me get this straight. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get some... I'm, trying, I'm just trying to get some clarity here. Now, these people are bidding on people mm -hmm. based on their physical attributes mm -hmm. and based on um, their, you know, hair, athleticism, name. No, it wasn't nothing like that. It was just the way they looked, like if they had good hair. Yeah. And their name. Like back in the day, we was bidding on how we look. Yeah. And if we can plow, the, you know, we can, you know, pull the mule or whatever. You know, right, that's what right. they used to get us for. Exactly. But okay. now they're getting us for we got good hair. Okay. And what our name is. Okay. <laughs> but let me read this though. It's, uh, we did hear from the, the school district, and the school district did issue a statement saying that the incident was inappropriate, offensive, and racially charged. I don't care what the school district says. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be honest with y'all. This has happened before. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just what I'm taking. I mean, that's that's what I get from it. It's just that it hasn't never been brought up to the public before. And so now what the school is trying to do is backtrack and say, guess what? Save this face. is offensive. Mm -hmm. we got to save face mm -hmm. because we might get that funding cut off. For that new football stadium mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be so you know I, they miss me with that one they miss me with that one i'm not falling for it so well, one, of the, one of the parents i hope it's okay we say his name his name is mark grubbs okay. he has three children in the district he did pull his children children from the district and said this isn't the first time his children have experienced racism uh -huh. he said a lot of racism is at this school my son being called out of his name and whatnot and it got to the point he didn't mind fighting and that didn't sit right with me and my wife my son was never a fighter until he started going to this school so it's only they've been going through they just been trying to protect themselves when they start having an auction so I think that's when the excuse my friend that's when the shit hit the fan so in other words <laughs> so i was correct in saying this has happened before this right? has happened before <laughs> yep give that man a cookie <laughs> <laughs> yeah this has happened before okay can you right, imagine? Yeah. I mean, I know it's a different time from when we was in school, but yeah. I mean, okay, when you went to school in Oklahoma, there weren't too many black people, right? Nope. Did you experience any type of racism? Oh yeah, all the time. Really? But the thing of it is, with me and a lot of us going to school there, we could take care of that ourselves. Physically. We would go to the teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay, you call me a what? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a swift kick to the face. You know, oh, I'm a, I'm, oh, I'm a porch monkey? All right, here's a throat punch. Speaking of porch monkey, I forgot to read the story. Did you hear the story about the black football player? They put banana peels in his locker. Oh, man. <laughs> now, what are they trying to say? That he's quick on the field? That he be sliding through the field? Now, or they calling him a monkey? That's, that's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> because I can remember my stepdad, you know, who was a Vietnam vet. Mm -hmm. The white troops would tell the Vietnamese children that the black troops had tails. Mm -hmm. So what they would do is follow them behind the black, the, the, the children were following behind the black troops to see if they could see their tails. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't surprise me at all. I am not the slightest bit surprised that this happened. Mm, mm, mm. I just, um, I'm just going to the point I'm tired of saying, I don't know, but this is happening in our schools. It don't matter, babe. That's where it starts. These are young people. These young people are not even paying. I mean, I'm just going to say some of them. They don't have their own home. Nope. They're not paying a mortgage. Nope. They're not paying a car note. Nope. Where are they getting this entitlement from the car somebody act like this? You already know. 
Is it taught at home? That's exactly it. Or Ra is it something in the school? It's something we were discussing the other night. Racism is a learned behavior. Or is it on the internet? Again, racism is a learned behavior. Whether they learn it from home, they learn it from one of their friends, they learn it from the internet. Mm -hmm. Racism is a learned behavior. It's not something that somebody, nobody comes out the room talking about, I hate niggas. Yeah. Yeah. It's a learned behavior. And then here's another, this messed up with our baby babies. A Georgia daycare accused of racism after making black kids wait to eat. Oh man. And this story came about that, you know, it's a nice facility and they have cameras in so the parent can be at work or whatever and can see what their child is doing. And one father noticed that his child was just sitting there while the other children were eating. And then eventually when the white children finished eating, then his child was able to eat. <sighs> Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we can't eat. I mean, we don't. I thought we got past the counter. Let me. Did we get past the counter? Let me. Let me say this mm -hmm. to my to my white people out mm -hmm. there, to my white supremacists out there. Mm -hmm. Not white people, but white supremacists. You know who you are. I don't have to point you out. You know who you are. Mm -hmm. White supremacists. When you start messing with the babies, that just means that the gloves are off. Yep. Because I'm just going to be honest with you. If that was me and that was my child, and you did that to my child, let's just say hypothetically speaking that me and my co-host had a child. Mm -hmm. She would have to beat me to the daycare. Mm. Or meet me at the daycare to keep me from burning that son bitch down. But that's just me. I would make sure all the children got out first. I wouldn't burn no child up. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely burn that daycare center down. <laughs> But let me say this, okay, now that you say that, would it be a discernment if you only took your child to a black daycare? Or did, shouldn't they, okay, so since this, this daycare had white children and black children, right. is that a problem? It should never be a problem because yeah. a child is a child is a child. Right, it's a daycare. You don't say white daycare. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and, and just letting the white children eat first and then the black children eat last. Right. That's putting a message in those white children's uh, mind because at that age they're very impressionable. Mm -hmm. And they're going to see that happening mm -hmm. and say, oh, I'm above a black person. Mm -hmm. That person is beneath me. I have to eat first and then they'll eat after I get finished eating mm -hmm. if there's anything left. Right. Mm -hmm. so, it's sickening to me. I'm sorry. I agree with you. I mean, that. I know the daycare probably didn't think nothing about it, you know. Right. But that, that's sickening. I'm sorry. That's not the first time that the daycare has done something sure. like that. I'm sure. I'm, I'm more than sure. positive. Mm hmm. I am more than positive this is the first time something like this has happened. Mm -hmm. And here's another one. Oh, a damn. woke, quote unquote, New York City school curriculum prompts dad to move daughter to Florida. Okay, bye. So this is where a dad saw his daughter's curriculum and he noticed that they was teaching racism in the school. Okay. And he got offended and said, my daughter shouldn't have to be subjected to that. So he pulled his daughter. <laughs> Put her out of school, which is in New York City, and moved all the way to Florida. All the way to Florida, where racism is rampant. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's still there, too. Yeah. So he, I guess he must have moved her to a school that he must have went in there and said, Let me see your curriculum. And he scanned it real quick and said, Okay, I don't see nothing about black history. Said, okay, we can go here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. Because there are some schools out there, there are some states out there that don't recognize Black History Month. You know, his daughter is nine years old. Do you really think she knew what, what what it was and what it was not? She didn't know. She if had, she did, she's, I would be very impressed if she did. Oh, yeah, I would, too. I would, too. I would definitely be impressed with that. But, you know, I'm just saying, I'm not going to say that she didn't know. I'm not going to mm -hmm. say she didn't know. But I can honestly tell you this. If that, if, let me put it like this. Him taking his child out of their school because they were teaching her something about race. Mm -hmm. I think that's the dumbest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. They asked him, why did you do it? And he said, my daughter, that New York private school cover race-related curriculum. Little children don't need to feel bad about the color of their skin. Because I don't even know if they even know about the color of their skin. I mean, I'm sure they know that they're different colors and things like that. But sometimes a nine-year-old really don't care if... I have pigtails and she have a ponytail if I have braids 
and she had curls. My skin is darker, her skin is lighter. I don't think nine year I mean, I, like again, like we said previously, that's taught at home. And by him reacting like this, I wanted to he truly sit down with his nine year old daughter and explain to her why he was pulling her out of school. He didn't. He didn't. He just did it because he's a parent and what he says goes. A race related curriculum. Come yeah. on. What? Is, what? Seriously, I don't. They were teaching black history. Right. I can pretty much guarantee you that's pretty <laughs> and, and, much what it was. She, they were teaching black history. Well, mm -hmm. you know, white history is taught in schools, in American schools, year round. Year round. Year round. You might hear something about black people. You might hear something about Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. You might hear something about uh, Martin Luther King Jr. They might gloss over Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. They might discuss Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. They might. Mm -hmm. Um. But as far as them talking on a regular basis about black history, no, they don't do that. <laughs> I honestly don't get it. I just, I don't get it. I just don't get it. You can't stop a curriculum because nine times out of ten, there's going to be other races in your child's class. Lots of them. And that child is going to have to know that it's good to learn about other cultures. Yeah. And that is nothing that parents should feel bad that their children is learning. Here's the thing. You can do whatever you want to pull your child, you pull your child. But don't make it seem like it's a bad thing. Let me say this real quick. Let me say this real quick. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up in Southeast Oklahoma, mm -hmm. there were three major groups of people that I went to school with. Mm -hmm. Black people, white people, Native American people. Mm -hmm. We were all together in the same classes a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that big of a deal. We knew the difference between everybody else. And we didn't care. Do you honestly think that child cared? No. Not at all. We learned, well at least in time we did, we learned about white history. We learned about black history. Mm -hmm. We learned about Native American history. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? I guess some parents don't feel like they need to be taught that. I guess. <laughs> I suppose. But I do. Okay, here's another one. I guess we're going to go to... The next couple of stories is going to be pretty much the culture that we're living in right now. Yep. So I'm going to start with this one. A white Fort Jackson soldier is charged in connection with an April 12th altercation with a black man. I don't know if you, if you guys saw the story, but this young man was just walking through the neighborhood, and this, I was, I'm um, I guess he was a sergeant, I believe. I was actually looking for the video of that. It's been, it's been scrubbed, some of the video has been scrubbed from That's the That's what I heard. It's so, not out there. Yeah, it's not out there anymore because. So let's just paint a picture. Okay. This young man is just walking through the neighborhood. Mine is all do, business. Do, 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 do. Mine is all business. Here comes this big burly white officer. No shoes on first. Let's start there. It was so important for him to run after this little man. He had no shoes on. He was about six, what you think, six four, six five? I find the guess about six five. Mm -hmm. Stocky. Stocky. Ball head. Ball head. And the young man was a little scrawny, little black young kid, probably about, what, 18, 19? I would say about 18, 19 years old. Probably about five, about, six, five, seven. No, I'd say about five, nine, five, five ten, nine. give mm -hmm. or take. Mm -hmm. So, and I would have, if I had to guess about 185, 190 pounds, mm -hmm. 100 pounds, something like that, mm -hmm. he's about my size. Mm -hmm. I'm about mm -hmm. five, seven and a half, and he's, he's about my size. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go up there. Uh, he is, he's a sergeant first class. So, I mean, he had a little rank in the service, right? Yeah, he got a little bit of rank. Yeah. So he wanted this young man to explain to him why was he walking in his neighborhood. Because I can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I would have said. Because I can. Mm -hmm. So now we can walk in neighborhoods. He kept telling the young man kept saying, I live. He said, show me where. I never seen. And then what made it so bad, the officer, let me go ahead and put his name out here. Put his name his out name there. is Jonathan Pentland. P-E-N-T-L-A-N-D. Pentland. Put his name out there. His Come wife went up behind him talking about, I've never seen you over here. Show us where you live. So now he has a Karen. And a Ken. <laughs> and a Ken. Asking him where he live. Because I guess they didn't like the way the color of his skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, see, that's one of the mm -hmm. things. For those of you who don't know black family, me and this lovely young lady to my right are looking for a house. Mm -hmm. 
I saw this story and that could have been me in that story. Mm -hmm. But it would have been a little bit different if that was me. Mm -hmm. Because even though I'm probably way about my 190 soaking wet with cement boots on, you know, I know a little something, something. And I can tell you right now, if he would have, he actually pushed this young man. Yeah, very. It was, it was a, a young man. He never like swung back. He never cussed the man out. You know, he never said anything negative to the man. He just kept saying, "What are you doing? Why are you doing this?" Mm -hmm. That would have resulted a little bit different if that was me. <laughs> it would have, you know, he would have ended up with a broken knee. Mm -hmm. You know, something would have broken. Yeah, yeah, he would have ended up with something broken on him because after he put his hands on me, now as long as he didn't touch me, I would have been cool with that. Mm -hmm. First, I would just kept walking, and ignore, and ignored him. But that's just me. Mm -hmm. But the second he got up in my face and put his hands on me, mm -hmm. lights out. Yeah. Part is over. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think he. This is just me as I start looking at this story. He wanted to intimidate this young that's man because you can see the weight class, the height, all that is different. That's all it was. You know, I'm like, come on, pick on your body, somebody your own size. That's all it was. That's all it was. But good to know that this. Sergeant was charged with third degree assault and has been suspended from all instructor duties. Here's the thing about that though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a misdemeanor though. But and he was fined five hundred dollars. But here's the thing about 30 that. Thirty days imprisonment. But here's the thing, here's the here's yeah. the aftermath of what happened with that. Mm -hmm. The brothers and the sisters pulled up to his house. Mm-hmm. And I saw that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Where mm -hmm. you at, bruh? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They came to see him. Did he come outside? He did not come outside. Yeah. They came to see him. Come outside now. Mm -hmm. They came to see him. The people in the neighborhood came out to see his ass, and he did not come out. He wasn't so bold then, was he? Hmm. Probably in the big shaking like a leaf. Come on now. He didn't want that smoke. Well, you know what? I'm going to read this. Uh, I saw this meme. It said, he better be glad he ran up in a Martin Luther King type and not a Malcolm X type. This would have been me. So, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Because so Malcolm like, said that in one of his speeches, he said, obey the law. Yeah. Be courteous. Mm -hmm. Be respectful. But if somebody puts their hands on you, send them to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Those are Malcolm X's exact words. Mm -hmm. They don't keep doing it. They just want to keep... If you, I mean, you know, here's the thing. I don't, I don't, I'm not a violent person by nature. I'm not. Mm -hmm. But I will protect myself. Right. Anyone would, yeah. Yeah. Especially I wanna, if I'm not doing nothing. I want to protect myself mm -hmm. and this woman over here. Mm -hmm. That's my job. Mm -hmm. And I would tell anybody that. You know, put your hands on me. Okay, you're going to pay for it. Put your hands on her. You're going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Either way, I'm going to hurt your ass. So, just, you can talk all the shit you want, but just don't touch me. Right. And that's just the way it is. Right. So now let's get to the top, top, top stop of, I'm sure everybody has heard that Mr. Chauvin, he got that ass handed to him, didn't he? He got that verdict, y'all. He got it. But all um, three counts. But to be honest with you, I'm just gonna be honest with everybody out there. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing about that. I'm gonna turn the music down real quick. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn the music down. For right now, ladies and gentlemen, even though we got that guilty verdict on all three counts, mm -hmm. let's not celebrate just yet. Let's not just stop. We got mm -hmm. some more people to go get. Mm -hmm. Because we got those other two officers that was out there watching him kill this man. Mm -hmm. We got them to get. Three. It was three. It was three of them. Oh, I'm three sorry. More we got those three officers to get to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We also have uh, Breonna Taylor's killers to get. Mm -hmm. We got um, Trayvon Martin's killers still out there running free. Mm -hmm. Michael Brown's uh, uh, killers still running free. Mm -hmm. uh, Alton Sterling's killers are still running free. What's the big guy? Garner. Eric Garner. Oh, his Garner. killers are still running free. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sandra Bland. Sandra Bland. Philando Castillo. Castillo. Tamir Rice. Mm -hmm. The 12 year old was playing in the mm -hmm. alley. Mm -hmm. We got the killers to go kill. Mm -hmm. To go get. So let's not celebrate just yet. Let's this is track. just a minor victory mm -hmm. in a very big war. Yes, sir. So I let's agree. not celebrate just yet. Mm -hmm. We got a long ways to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, good, it's a good thing we got that guilty verdict, but let's not celebrate just yet because yes, we got a whole lot more people to go after. 
which leads me to this topic here. When the verdict for um, Derek Chauvin came down, you know, a lot of us celebrated. But in between that time, good old sister Maxine Waters, you know, she, she was at a rally the night before the verdict came down. And what she said, well, let's make sure we show up wherever we have to show up. And from that little basic statement, I'm just paraphrasing, they tried to make a big deal out of it. And I guess they're trying to say that that's why the jury slayed toward convicting him, because they didn't want to uprise in the streets. Let me play that video real quick of, of her at the rally. Let me mm -hmm. play it real quick. And not just manslaughter, right? I mean... Oh, no, not manslaughter. No, no, no. This is, this is guilty for murder. I don't know whether it's in the first degree, but as far as I'm concerned, it's first degree. It's coming from what happens if we do not go get what you just told? What should the people do? What should protesters on the street do? I didn't hear you. What happens? Which, what should protesters do? Well, we, we got to stay on the street, uh, and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they they know that we mean business. All right now. All right now. Mm -hmm. All right now. So, from that statement, you know, the judge of the Chauvin case said that he wished that political leaders wouldn't say things and stuff like that. I don't think that the judge should have said that. I don't think they, Here, they're making a case out of nothing. Here's the deal about this situation. You know, there's a lot of people out there, black and white, that didn't like what Maxine Waters said. Mm -hmm. Now, Sister Waters has, you know... I'm kind of on the fence about her anyway. I've been on the fence about her for a while now. But she's been in the game for a long time. But she's time, been in the game though. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And she's seen a lot. And, you know, I get credit where credit is due. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she, she's she been there. Yes, she's she been is. there. I mean, her and the Congressional Black Caucus, you know, in my personal opinion, uh, here as of late, they've been, they've been used as a tits on the frog. Mm -hmm. But um, it's about time that somebody came out and said something that was that was remote that remotely made sense right. from the Congressional Black Caucus. And I applaud her for that. Right. Sister Maxine, you got you got props from me. And so, you know, that's all I got to say about that. And uh let's go ahead and you know give us some key about yeah, the situation. Yeah, so but and there's a lot of people out there that took what she said completely out of context. Mm -hmm. Now that was a person on my Facebook feed. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention his name that has something to say about the Maxine Waters deal. He was black. Mm. And he said something. He said something that if that had been Donald Trump, people would have been, talk, been talking a little bit different. Mm -hmm. No, we're talking about something completely different here. Donald Trump got pissed off because he lost an election, and he wanted his people to go up there and start acting fool because of the fact that he lost an election like a little spoiled brat. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maxine Waters was telling people that hey, if we don't get this verdict the way that we need to get it, stay right here in these damn streets, do what you gotta do, and and just stay out there until we get what we need. Right. From the situation, that's what she was saying. She didn't say go up and storm the Capitol building mm -hmm. the way Donald Trump did. So people are taking that completely out of context, in my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. Very much so. I think they're looking for somebody to blame. It's like it's nothing to blame. Uh, the whole world for nine minutes and twenty nine seconds saw a man murdered on film. They saw that man take his last breath. Last breath. So anything Maxine Waters said cannot override that fact that that man was on camera calling out for his mother, mm -hmm. saying I can't breathe, mm -hmm. take his last breath. Yep. So no, we can't blame this on Sister Maxine. I'm sorry, no we can't. No, you can't blame Sister Maxine mm -mm. for that. You can't blame Sister for that. Nah. You know, as far as her... Um, as far as uh, Mr. Chauvin, Mr. Chauvin not getting a fair trial, I want to talk about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. I'm going to ask you, babe. Mm -hmm. Do you think he got a fair trial? I absolutely do. Okay. I, I, okay, let me, let me go back. In a matter of speaking, I do feel like he did get a fair trial, but I feel like it went too many days long. I, oh, I feel like that on. case should have been up and shut the come first on. day within the first four hours. Say that again, baby. Say it again for the people in the back. I appreciate all those witnesses. I appreciate all the pathologists and, and the, 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 the guy who did the autopsy and the young lady who did the original film. I appreciate all of y'all. Don't get me wrong. Kudos to you guys. But when that case... <laughs> 
But when that film starts rolling, that should have been a open and shut case. I'm sorry. There wasn't nothing else to be discussed. I couldn't say it no better, people. Sorry. That's just that's my personal opinion. I couldn't have said it no better, y'all. I could not have said it any better. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have said it any better. I saw a couple of stories on some of the juries. One of the young men was a black man. He was 31 years old. And he was saying every day it was hard for him to sit in there. Every day he left, he would go. Like the first couple of days of the trial, he would literally go home and vomit. I'm sorry for lack of a better word. He would vomit. And then he would cry. Wow. And he said every day of the trial, he cried. Wow. A 31-year-old black man, he kept saying, when is this going to be over? He said as many times he wanted to just say, look, I quit. But he knew as a black man, he had to be there. But that's, that's I, I don't even think I could have done it. Could you have been a, a jury? A juror? Been a juror on a case? In a case like that? Yeah. I'm just going to be honest with you. I would have I, I said, look, let's go ahead and convict this man so we can go home. Cause we know he's guilty. Let's mm -hmm. why prolong it? Mm -hmm. That's what I would have done. I would have been the asshole on the jury. But what I, was, I liked about it, even though I have my little earn my jaws towards the judge about what he said about Maxine, uh, Sister Maxine, Rep Representative Maxine, or whatever, Congresswoman Maxine. Was. Right. And when he read off those verdicts, and then he said, "I'm gonna ask each jury, how did you plead?" And not a one said no. All of them said yes to all three counts. I just like his family. I saw one of his family, and I think it was his aunt. She said it was like this relief came over. She said because I was wondering was it going to be one that said no. If it if it would, if it would have been one to say no, and they were trying to throw him a bone, they really were. Mm -hmm. They were trying to throw that jury a bone to so they could be a hung jury, and it'll be a done deal after that. Definitely. But it didn't happen. Definitely. Justice was definitely served in this situation. Mm -hmm. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, I know that um, Candace Owens has something to say about mm -hmm. it. On, you know, and mm -hmm. she has something to say. She was on Tucker the Fucker Carlson show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said it. I'll say it again. Tucker the Fucker. I don't like his ass. You know, because he's always got something bad to say about black people anyway, so, you know, he can kiss my ass. Mm -hmm. You know, I hope it gets back to him, too. I don't like your ass. But anyway, um, he got, she got on Tucker's show and was talking about that the jury was railroaded into giving that guilty verdict. Now, I don't know what case she was watching. Mm -hmm. I really don't. But she definitely said that he didn't get a fair trial. So he would have been found not guilty. It would have been a fair trial. I don't see how. You I had, I had her phone number. You call. had expert after expert mm -hmm. after expert. Mm -hmm. Even for the defense. That's the sad part. Mm -hmm. And it was one guy who got up there and said, No, I don't think he died from the knee on the chest. You know, he was doing drugs. Oh yeah, they tried so to explain I don't the narrative. He had a heart attack. And then he turned that defense attorney got to, uh, he said are you sure? Like he was excited, you know. I'm right. like, if you don't sit down somewhere, that man was just in the store buying him something. He could have had a. I know you can have a heart attack anywhere. Yeah. But if, if he was not laying on the hot, on hot asphalt, pressure on his back and his neck, laying flat on his stomach, he would have been okay. I don't think he would have had a heart attack that day. I agree. I really don't. I agree. But yeah, I think he got a fair trial. And poor sister Candace, I just. I wish I had her phone number. I would love to pick her brain on some things she said. Because I think if she's a cool who's getting paid. I really do. I, I don't think this woman thinks like this. She's a cool man. I mean, I mean, everything that Candace Owens says is very detrimental to, to, the, to the development of black people. Mm -hmm. And for the, yeah, it really is. Everything that she says is detrimental to the development of black people. Mm -hmm. So... Those are the kind of people, those are the most dangerous kinds of black people because they're against their own kind. People right. that look like them. But then again, you got to think about Candace Owens. She is not a foundational black American. Yeah, she, she's from Jamaica. So yeah, yeah. Her Jamaica. family's from the Caribbean. Yeah, Caribbean. And a lot of them are coons anyway. Yeah. Not all of them. I know some cool Caribbeans. I know some cool Caribbeans. Mm -hmm. But there are some coons out there. There's a coon class out there that will come over here and talk about black people like their shit. And mm -hmm. so you got to watch them. And she's one of them. So I'm not surprised she said it. I'm really not. I'm not surprised she said it at all. Really disgusting though. She's another that's sad. Yep. 
Well, you, know, you know, with the Shrive and Trial, was it the end all, end all? Or was it more about equality for us all? Do you think this would be the first step toward equality? Uh, it can be. I'm not going to say that it is, but yeah. it can be. I mean, because if for the longest time, white people have been getting away with killing black people with impunity. Mm-hmm. This one right here is one small victory. Like I said before, it's just a small victory, so it's not time to celebrate just yet. Right. Let's get the rest of them. I agree. But um, he, uh, what I don't like also, I don't know what, I know this is, I guess this is the law. It, he's not going to get sentenced until August, so. So hopefully he'll get the sentence that is. That's, that's what I'm, that's, I hope the punishment fits the crime. Yeah, exactly. Good, good phrase, yeah. I, I hope really do. I hope out. the punishment fits the crime. I mean, you know, I'm from, I'm from the old school. You know, I, I'll look at Hammurabi's code and say, because the Hammurabi code and the code that's in the Bible, which is where the Bible got it from in the first place, mm-hmm. said an eye for an eye, two for a tooth, a nose for a nose, a life for a life. Right. So, that is my view. That's the way I see it. So, I think the punishment should, should fit the crime. I mean, if they don't want to kill him, which they probably won't, put him in jail for the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that's not that's not what I'm settling for. I'd rather him a life for, I'd rather have a life for a life. Yeah. But, you know, I'll take life in prison. Well, the case that he can face up to 40 years, but then there's some other charges that he can get, like, on one count he can get 12 years, another right. count he can get 15 years. But, I, I'm like you. You took a life, yours be given. Exactly, that's in the Bible. Yeah. I mean, I know that's probably humane to say. Yeah, that's, but that's very humane. I don't care, but you know, that's that's the way it is. I mean, yeah. because if the, if the roles were reversed, mm-hmm. they would kill that black man. I promise you they would. He would get the death sentence immediately. Because just think about it. If he do do his time, just say if they give him 30 years, he'd time out. served. He'd be out in 15. He could still get out, walk around here, kind of live a productive life, we'll do whatever he do. George Floyd will never be back. No, he won't. He'll be Ever. Out in his memory, but not his physical body. There you go. So what's how is that even justifiable? It's not. And they know it. Right. Right. But in between that time that this uh Chauvin sentences was coming down, which is so sad, yep. several other police brutality situations took place. Of course. The first one was 16-year-old Makaya Bryant. And then there's the 13-year-old young man, Adam Toledo. Oh, yeah. And then the 20-year-old Dante Wright. Yeah. And then Andre Brown Jr. Now. I just, when that, I'm like, God, we're all in the same week. Now, that's because, like I told you before, and like Marvin has always said to back me up, White supremacy does not like to take L's. Okay? And this is an L. This whole Chauvin case is the L that white people, that the white supremacists took. Mm-hmm. They don't like that. They're going to retaliate. That's why these people have been getting killed. Mm-hmm. Now, I heard, I think I would think you showed this to me. I read an article where the young man that was killed, what's his name? The, the, uh, the young man that was killed by the lady that shot him in the face. Dante Wright. Dante Wright. Mm-hmm. I heard that she can't be charged with, with, right. with murder now. Yeah, she cannot according, be charged with murder. According to Minneapolis, yeah, mm-hmm. and under, under Minnesota law, she can't be charged with murder. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the funny part about the situation. That city that they're in, what's it called? What's the name they called? It's funny, they took a, let me see if I can look at that. The city, they, Brooklyn what? Yeah, Brooklyn City. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Center or something yeah, like Brooklyn that. Yeah, Brooklyn Center, exactly. That's it. Yeah. Brook, uh, was it Brooklyn Center or Brooklyn something? Brooklyn Center, mm-hmm. But anyway, mm-hmm. that, that, that um, city was founded by a known white supremacist anyway. Oh, really? Yeah, look that up. He was mm-hmm. a known white supremacist. That, let me see if I can find it. I know it's like I, when they kept saying, yeah, Brooklyn Sunday and Brooklyn City. Yeah, I thought it was like, in, I don't know from me, I just correlate that with New York. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it is Brooklyn Center. Yeah, yeah. But that's, do you know the the, um, the guy who formed I it? forgot the guy's name, but really? yeah, yeah. It, it, that, that's, that, that city was started by, by non white supremacists at that time. Wow. That's crazy. I haven't heard that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to do your research, man. Yeah, I do my Brooklyn research Brooklyn right Center in Minneapolis, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A known white supremacist. A known white supremacist started that town. Wow. Awful. I know it. Awful. 
What else you got, baby? But yeah, it's just like, so now it just makes me wonder, like, because it's kind of funny how all those deaths that I just mentioned happened the same time frame after the Shavin's case trial was sentencing, well, not his sentencing, but he was charged. Is this the end of the, or is this the beginning of something, like some kind of like retaliation? Exactly. That's you know, exactly because it's like it's kind of fun how boom, 16 year old, exactly boom, 20 year old, boom, 13 year old. That's and now this man about. was sitting in his car and the Andre Brown, now they trying to say the way his shots was uh, shot at him, it was almost like an execution. So uh, yeah, like, now that. they get even close to shooting you. Uh, you that's know? what I heard. That's what I heard. Like, and then there was a young lady that wow. was shot. Then there was a young lady that was shot four times in the chest. The 16 year old. Yeah, the 16 year old. But they said they were trying to protect her because she had a knife. And they didn't want her to stab the other lady that was she was fighting. You ever heard of a taser? And that's what I said. They said this guy was he was trained to be a tactical shooter. So I'm thinking he could have shot her one hand one time in the so hand he that shot she had her. the knife. So he shot her. He didn't have to shoot her, period. Yeah, he could have shot her anywhere and, and would have not. He didn't know. have to shoot her, period. Exactly. That's my whole point. Mm -hmm. Because I'm gonna go ahead and say this real quick. LeBron mm -hmm. James mm -hmm. um had posted something up and he has since then taken a tweet down. Right. Let me go ahead and post it up there. Mm -hmm. uh, LeBron James said something really profound in this tweet. He said, you're next. Accountability. Ha hashtag accountability. Mm -hmm. Now, he has since then taken the tweet down because people thought that, I guess people felt that because he put that, put that up there talking about you're next. I guess people thought that he was trying to threaten, threaten this, this, this man or put a hit out on him right. and say the streets are going to get you. Right. No, that's not what LeBron meant. Now, anybody that knows me will tell you flat out, I am not a LeBron James fan on the court. On the court, I'm not a LeBron James fan. But so they said maybe, maybe they're thinking he was trying to create more hate. No, nah, that's not it. That's okay. not what he was doing. Mm -hmm. That is not what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm not a LeBron James fan by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. On the court. Off the court, I love him to death. Mm -hmm. But basically what he was saying was... Uh, was we're going to get you too because you're going to be held accountable for the life you took. Accountability. In other words, your ass is going to get put in prison too. Right. You're going to pay for the murder that you just caused. That's what he meant. Mm -hmm. But because he's LeBron James, mm -hmm. he's black, rich man. All of a sudden, oh, he's putting a hit on this dude. It's just it's disgraceful and exactly. It's disgraceful and dangerous. Dangerous thing to even mm -hmm. say something like that. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. He That's said his what he opinion. said. That's his opinion. He said what he said. So you know. Same thing I, with Maxine Waters. It, exactly. I didn't think anything was wrong with it. But that's just me. He can. Be, that's his. That's his social media account. His social media. He account should be able to put wants. anything he wants to. But he's since then taken it down. Yeah. I I, mean, would you have done it? Would you yeah. have taken your own thing? Hell no. Why did I even? Ask? No, I would have left <laughs> stay up there. I said what I said. Yeah. You know, hey, it is what it is. Right. Do you need to do one, do one or two things with it? You can like it or not like it. You right. choose not to like it. Okay. Mm How -hmm. at you? Don't right. look at it. Yeah. I don't know. It's you can't say nothing. People think you've been a hate monger, or you inciting hate, or you inciting a race war. Oh my God! Come on. This is too much. You can't say nothing. You can't do nothing. You can't. Let's. Uh, there's so much more in this world to be focused on. What I put on my social media account. Exactly. Let's start there. Let's start there. Exactly. But in between time, there was a story that I really wanted to talk about. Oh man. <laughs> I'm going to end with that one, but we talked about the Andrew Brown sh Jr. shooting. It's like, that day was just unbelievable, all the different shootings and things like that. But, that's a good story. Okay, it was a story that I showed you about. It was an elderly lady, an elderly 60, I think she's like 67, 68 year old lady, black lady. She's a librarian. And you know, why would you think the policemen should be uh, kind of like on alert or on guard or how they're, how they're approaching situations as far as traffic stops? You would think they'll get a little bit better. But her name was Stephanie Bottom. She's 66. She was reportedly speeding and the Salisbury Police Department pulled her out of her car by her hair. You know what? I just, when are we going to get, st these stories are getting ridiculous, ridiculously, I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> it is now. It's getting, it's getting to be stupid, really. You know Do what? you not have a brain? Want me to go ahead and play the video? Please. Because right. I know people are not going to believe this. Alright, here's the actual video, y'all. It happened in North Carolina. Alright, here's the video. Stop. 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 Stop.
we all get in front of someone to stop it like that. Rolling, 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 rolling about five miles an hour. Did you hear him say 
It was a simple traffic stop. All we had to do was write you a ticket and you turned it into this. Like she, she to blame to get treated like that. Okay, so if it was a routine traffic stop mm -hmm. and you all you had to do is write her a ticket, mm -hmm. why did you drag her out of her car by mm -hmm. her hair? Mm -hmm. They thought she had been drinking. Again, why did you drag her out of her car by her hair? Because they had to follow her to three cars, follow her 10 miles. Y'all follow her 10 miles. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all don't understand something about elderly people, mm -hmm. especially elderly black people. Now, from what I understand, this lady's colorblind. Mm -hmm. So if she's colorblind, and she, she can't. She's playing her music loud too. Don't forget that point. And she was playing her music up loud. Mm -hmm. She would turn her music up loud. Mm -hmm. Okay, now with her being colorblind, she's not going to see those flashing lights. Mm -mm. She's not going to see them. Okay, and you manhandled this woman like she was a man. Yes, sir. Now, all I have to say about that right there is this right here. And I'll go ahead and go on record and say that. Mm -hmm. You better be lucky it wasn't my mother. I just it could have been my mama. Could have been my mother. Could have been, my could have been your mother. Mm -mm. My grandmother. Had, your grandmother. They could have been Annie. either one of my aunts. Mm -mm. They could have been mm -mm. a whole plethora mm -mm. of relatives. I have older cousins. Mm -hmm. Could have been one of them. Mm -hmm. Just be glad that they weren't related to me. That's all I have to say about Three? that. Three? It took all Three. of you to manhandle this woman. And you did manhandle her. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you slice it. Definitely. That's what you did. You manhandled this woman. An, o an elderly black lady. And the sad part about it was you had a very smug look on your face when you did it, like it was a sense of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. You beat up an old lady. It took, no, I'll take that back. You took three of y'all to beat up an old lady. Right. She's shaking in fear. She's shaking in fear. And She's scared to said, death. I was getting ready to die. When they grabbed me and threw me to the ground, this is when the real terror struck in me and I am about to die. Yep. That's what she felt. That's what she said she was feeling. That's her girl. Oh, mm -mm. Again, mm -mm. I'm gonna say it again. Mm -mm. Be glad it wasn't my mother. Could have been my mom. <laughs> or worse yet, be glad it mm -mm. wasn't this lady to my right. Mm -mm. Cause she would have called me. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense, people. None. I don't get it. Mm -mm. I don't get it. I don't. Well, the good news is she is suing all three officers. Hell, that's what I'm talking about. For excessive there you go, sister. force. There you go, sister. And they tore her rotator cuff yep. while pulling her out the car. Yep. So pay they cha -ching, pay her payola, uh, what they say, cash out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pay her. Dang. Especially if it's on camera, too. Pay her. That was excessive force. This is ridiculous. That this makes no sense ridiculous. whatsoever. None. That lady could have had a heart attack. She could have had a heart attack, and you could have really heard something with her. I mean, she's an elderly black. She, she's mm -hmm. an elderly lady. Period. I mean, let's just forget about about the fact that she's black just for a few seconds. Bone. She's she's an elderly. Mm -hmm. She's she's an elderly person. Period. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know that the bones are brittle. Mm -hmm. You know that for a fact. Definitely. So now you got you got to take that into consideration. Her bones are brittle. You better be glad you didn't break something. Mm -hmm. I mean, you tore a rotator cuff, which, you know, that's easy to tear because I've torn mine before. But here's the kicker, Sweet Peas. After all of that, and after all the things they put that woman through, she never was arrested. Really? Never got arrested. Pay her. Oh, yeah. She's going to get paid. Pay her. Oh, she's going to get paid. Mm-mm. Sister's just going to get a come up mm -mm. right there. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. I was like, when I read this story, I was like, am I, is this, is this for me? Pull her by her hair. First of all, everybody know I love me some her. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Mine, somebody else's, I don't care whose it is. She does, y'all. But you gonna grab this one? You mean tell me you had to grab this woman by her hair? To drag her out the car. Now let me ask you this. There was a white woman. How that situation went? If that was an old white woman, it would have been so calm and cool with her. and said, ma'am, did you see us back there 10 miles back? They would have been all cordial and everything. I can pretty much guarantee you they would have been. And you can't tell me different. Nobody can tell me different. Nobody can tell me different. I think all this started because they had to follow behind her 10 miles. And I think that's how it all started. That's but that's why he it. kept saying, did you not see us? No, she didn't. She's and she colorblind. she was like, no, I didn't. I did not see you guys. She's colorblind. How could she see you? Yeah. Unbelievable. 
But that story, that's another one that's done touch my little heart. Touch, touch, tap dance on my heart. And also, I don't know if I sent you this story or not, but did you see, like, you know, we, we're, we're, we're talking about the police officers and their brutality. But then I came across this story where the head, one of the head men is telling his officers to do it. A Georgia sheriff allegedly ordered his employees to use excessive force against detainees. Oh yeah, that's the, oh yeah. So in yeah. this case, if this was these three officers' boss, they was given the leeway to do that by their boss. So that means they are training these men, because some stories say they don't train, and we don't train like that. And then this is the kicker, you guys. This sheriff who told his officers to do it was a black man. <sighs> was a black man. A black man. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm now, now, who do we blame in this situation, Reggio? I'm speechless. Mm, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> like if I got to get myself a word on that one. <laughs> Reggio is speechless? I'm speechless on that one. I'm speechless on I that one. I am totally shocked. <laughs> Here's the thing. A black man mm-hmm. saying being brutal. Yep. Now... I yes, don't sir. get it. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, no police officer should have to be brutal at all. I mm-hmm. mean, that's just my personal opinion. So, you know, when I hear about you know police officers being brutal and all that good stuff, mm-hmm. I just I'm just looking like really, brother. Do you really need to be that brutal? Yeah. You really don't. I mean, especially a black police officer because like black police officers get a bad rep anyway. Mm-hmm. And then you're gonna be up here talking about be brutal, bruh. Come on now, really. Seriously, that don't make no sense. That makes no sense whatsoever. Now that was just overuse of force. That was way over the that top. That was just like un- was, unnecessary. Force. That was way over the top. Yeah. That was way over the mm-hmm. top. It's just. <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? Man, you can't say, man. The situation right here is just, is getting out of hand. Mm-hmm. It really is. I mean, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> It really is, man. You know what's going to have to happen is you're going to have to hit these, these, these people in the po- in the pocketbook, which is why they have to defund the police thing. Mm-hmm. See, people are getting that blown out of context. When they say defund the police, what they're doing is, is saying take some of that money from those from those, from those uh, police officers' fundings mm-hmm. from their from their budget, and until they get some act right. Once they get some act right, give it back to them. That's what they mean by defund the police. They don't just they don't mean just say cut the police force out completely. That's mm-hmm. not that's not what that's meant. Mm-mm. But that's where people take it, mm-hmm. and that's not what they mean. No, not at all. So, you no, know, there's that. But well, I'm gonna come back to some more stories that we had, because I'm gonna go ahead and say this one. Um, this past week, okay, President Biden gave his uh, first address to the joint session of Congress because. He- <laughs> 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 because he been in office a hundred days, <laughs> and I looked at it, you know, the parts I caught, it was very inspiring. It was totally different from his previous predecessor that used to give speeches. He didn't make it all about him and what he's done and what he plans to do. He was more or less very forthright. He was telling us plans he had to make the economy better. Mm-hmm. Of course, he spoke of COVID nineteen. Still ain't got that shot yet, have you? Hell no. All right. And he also spoke about how he's going to try to get us back on court with other countries. So right now we're a laughing stock in other countries' eyes. Of course. And he's going to raise the taxes on the wealthy. Of course. And, you know, he, he put out some very nice points. Okay. So what, did you see any parts of the, the address? I didn't even see it because, like I said, I didn't vote for him. So, mm-hmm. I mean, whenever Donald Trump would call himself trying to give him the dress, which is about like my eight-year-old grandson giving mm-hmm. him that dress. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really look at it. I mean, I caught the highlights of it, mm-hmm. and the only thing that people took from that is that, you know, they're going, he's going to raise taxes to pay for it. Yeah, he, and yeah. there's a lot of rich folks mm-hmm. that don't like that, mm-hmm. which I really don't care. Hell, tax the hell out of them. They got the money. They can they can afford it. <laughs> so, and that's th- those are the ones that really don't like it. Yeah. So, you know, that's just that's that's just that. That's mm-hmm. just that. I mean, think about this for a second, people. 
Don't get mad at Biden for raising taxes because there hasn't been a president that we've ever had in recent history that has not raised taxes exactly. for some reason or another. That includes Donald Trump. Exactly. Okay? I don't care who you, I don't care which president you're talking about. President Obama raised taxes. And okay? how, sneaky, how sneaky Trump did it. Everybody thought, oh, he going to cut our payroll taxes. What y'all doing now with them taxes you got to pay back this year? Say that again. Ah, uh-huh, he got you, got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. Say that again. Yeah, for you the got a nice little that. payroll tax break from what, 2018 to 2020. And then you got to file your tax for 2021 for 2020. Hey, babe. If any of y'all get a refund check, because I know I am probably won't, because hey, I, I got mine all up front. Hey, babe, okay. real quick. Yes, real sir. Quick. Yes, sir. <laughs> say that real, say that again for the folks in the back. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. <laughs> Sound like their grandma from Eddie Murphy movie. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, he got us. He, he, he. What you always say, he screwed us with no Vaseline. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. And not even a thank you or a kiss on the cheek. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Just got to put his pants on and left. Yep, there you go. But, you know, after President Biden gave his speech, there's always a rebuttal, a rebuttal oh, by the Lord. Republican. And Reggio's favorite guy in the world, <sighs> Tim Scott, was the elected one to give the rebuttal. You want to say anything about your friend you and know his what? rebuttal? This is what he said. <laughs> this this is what he said. This is what he said. I'm going to explain this picture that I got up here, y'all, in mm-hmm. just a minute. Mm-hmm. He said that this is not a racist country. Guess what he said. Let me say it again for the people in the back. Please. Now you see this melon head fool up here right now, right? <laughs> he said, now here, here, here's what gets me about this whole speech because I listened to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. He said he had experienced racism himself. Mm-hmm. He experienced getting stopped for no reason. Mm-hmm. He experienced um, uh, getting followed in the store. Mm-hmm. But he insists that this isn't a racist country. Mm-hmm. Guess who agreed with him? Mm. Guess. Who? Take a wild guess, people. Mm. I don't know. Tell us. Madam Vice President Kamala Harris agreed with him. Shut <laughs> your mouth. Oh, yeah. I kept telling Does y'all. She really? I kept telling y'all. For all those people that was big up in Kamala Harris saying that she that that, that she's she's this and she's that, mm-hmm. I bet y'all thinking different now. Yeah, she said it, y'all. I told y'all. She I said told it. y'all. I told and let me y'all. just give myself some kudos right quick. Let me interject here. I told y'all I like her. She was an AKA. I like the little Chuck Taylor because I'm a Chuck Taylor girl. But I told y'all that lady is never going to identify as being a black woman once she is elected. I told y'all. And she has not. I've been saying it. And now look at this statement she just made. I've been saying it. I had an argument with somebody on my Facebook mm-hmm. feed saying that very same thing because I because every so often on my Facebook feed I put a public service announcement on there mm-hmm. and I put it up there to everybody out there. I know I'm going to hurt some feelings, but I don't care. Kamala Harris is not black. Mm-hmm. And she's not. Mm-hmm. She don't identify as black. She identifies as the first Indian, this first Indian that. Mm-hmm. She didn't start trying to identify as black until she started running for office. Mm-hmm. That's when she started identifying as black. And now, you're eating your words now, ain't you? Mm-hmm. And even now she said the first, you know, she don't put black first. No, she don't. I told y'all. Well, we had to try. I told y'all. We had to try. We had to give her a try. We had to, you know. We I had told to. y'all. I told you. We tried. You tried, you know. I know it. I know it. I hate to be an I told you so, but guess what? But did you I hear about you. the civil rights attorney who said the systematic discrimination doesn't exist? You know who else said that? His name is Leo Terrell. Yeah. A civil rights attorney said that? Yeah, he said that. Say, man, come on now. <laughs> he sounds just like Larry Elder. Yeah. He sounds just like Jesse Lee Peterson. Oh. He sounds just like Alan West. He mm. sounds just like Colin Powell. Mm. He sounds just like J.C. Watts. He sounds just like Lil Wayne. He sounds just like Morgan Freeman. Mm. And the list goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. Of, black, of, of, of a whole lot of black people saying that systematic racism doesn't exist or racism in general doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Morgan Freeman went so far to say that racism wouldn't exist if people stopped talking about it. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, in the words of Willie D, your daddy should have pulled out and your mama should be embarrassed. Oh, alrighty then. So, okay. <laughs> Well, he did say that Jim Crow ended in 1964. There is no Jim Crow. So if there is no Jim Crow, what is that they doing down in Georgia? 
And what are these new laws they finna write in Oklahoma? It's Jim Crow 2.0. And what are these new laws they finna write in Florida and it's, Texas? It's Jim Crow 2.0. Exactly. So what he mean is don't exist. Come on. Yes, it does. Don't get out of here. Yes, it does. Yeah. And for anybody that think different, mm -hmm. you know, <sighs> prove me wrong, man. Mm -hmm. I challenge anybody out there listening to prove me wrong. Please, Definitely. I want you to. Definitely. Give me the smoke. I want the smoke. Bring mm -hmm. it. You know. But anyway, but this let, you know now that we said all the bad stories, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of good stories. Wrap you know to kind of soothe the pain a little bit. The three men that was charged in the Aubrey uh, Ahmad Aubrey's case has been sentenced, um, which I am a dollar late. How you say it? A dollar short, a dollar late. Day late and dollar short. But I'm glad they finally came to reach. They haven't with the court yet, but they are going to be charged. <laughs> Yes. Travis McMichael, Greg McMichael, and William Roddy Bryant will have their day in court. Hopefully within the next two to three months. But there's hopefully there'll be a justice for Ahmad and then we get justice for Brianna. Then we get justice for Sandra Bell. We get justice for all of them. But like I said, just like Reggio said earlier, just don't stop because we got one conviction with Chauvin in the George Floyd case. We got to keep fighting people. Yeah. We yeah. gotta keep fighting. We gotta keep on pushing. You know, mm -hmm. just like that impression song. We gotta keep on pushing. Mm -hmm. Keep on pushing, y'all. And here's Can't another stop. feel good story. I saw this story and I saw her actually spoke and I was so proud of her. A former Buffalo police officer who was fired for for stopping a colleague's chokehold has oh, been vindicated yeah. in court. You hear her story? Oh, her name yeah. is Miss Carell Horn. Oh yeah, and she was on the police department, and she saw one of her colleagues doing a like a actual a, a shoving kind of move, and she went through to stop him, and she was fired. She was she's been fired all this time. She wasn't able to get another position anywhere else. It came to the point that they was trying to stop her pension, but she filed and she sued, and she has finally got her vindication. Which is so sad because this happened so many moons ago. It happened in 2006. And she's just not getting and a pension she's back. She's just not getting it. So, so over a decade. Mm, it's 15, been over a decade. 15 years. It's been over a decade. And she's just 15. not getting a pension? Yes, sir. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. But in the win, it's a win-win because she did write a book, so now she's finna get her pension. Plus, hopefully, she'll get her book sale because this is a good story, you know, for people to read. To right. let them know, just like we were saying, we got to keep fighting. Even though these cases have happened, like Tamir Wright, that was how many years ago? Uh, that's been a while. It's yeah, so just like this while. lady. This happened to her in 2006. Even though it's 2021, she's just not getting justice. We got to keep fighting. She said she never gave up because she knew what she was doing was the right thing. Yeah, it, it was yeah. the right thing. I mean, mm -hmm. she did exactly what any good cop would do. Right. Mm -hmm. So yes, but I'm for her to fire her job, that means it's a brotherhood or something with those police officers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's a brotherhood crazy. with them. It's a brotherhood with them. They fire her because she did the right thing. So now they find they're going to make a new law, and it's going to be called the Carroll's Law, where if you see something, say something, no matter if you're a police officer or not. And I think that is beautiful. That is beautiful. So other than that. Um, I think that was a feel good story to let people know all bad cops are not bad, you know. I've always said that, and I continue to say that, man. Mm -hmm. all, all cops are not bad cops. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there's some good cops out there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you are a good cop or, or think you're a good cop and you do nothing, when you see a bad cop doing bad cop stuff, right. you're just as guilty as that bad cop. Right. Because you can stop it. And here's a the, here's the lady right here who stopped it and suffered the consequences after she stopped it. Yes. And I think that's kind of messed up Definitely. because she went against the grain and went against the brotherhood or the code that cops have. Right. Yeah. Now that's not fair. Now is it? No. She did the right thing. She did what she did what a cop is supposed to do because a cop is supposed to do the right thing at all times. At all times, protect and serve. Right? Protect and serve. That's their job. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So you know that's just my view on that. Right. So do you want to open the phone lines or do you want to Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and open make the phone, phone lines. Calls, I gotta, I'm going to go ahead and go open the phone lines. I got to get Roxanne to call. You know, she's on if she's if she's ready to talk. Okay. So, um, but just in case anybody want to call, I'm going to go ahead and give you the phone line, the podcast number. Right. It's 469-638-3459. The 469-638-3459. Yes, indeed. Yeah, Let's give us a call because I know we discussed a lot of stories today. So if you have an opinion or your thoughts on different things that we 
talked about or anything that's happening now that you would like to speak on, please give them a call. We would love to hear your thoughts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, anybody, man. You know, so, um, you know, by all means, call in. So, you know, we love to hear people's opinions on everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, but anyway, um, back to the subject at hand, mm -hmm. you know, you said we're a day late and a dollar short, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to progress of black people. Right. Because we, because... Uh, one of the reasons why I, I, I love this lady so much is because of the fact that we do have such deep and, 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 and thought-provoking conversations. Mm -hmm. That's that's one of the main things I love about her, not to mention she's cute as a button. But <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, we, 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 we were having a, uh, a pretty good discussion like we always do. We mm -hmm. always talk like that. People think that... Um, that we don't have discussions like this all the time that this is just mostly for show but no we talk about this all talk we talk about stuff like this all the damn time this is nothing new to us i can get deep sometimes oh yeah i like i said you know she she's smart and she gives herself credit for it that, that's that's what i keep on trying to tell her she really is she's smarter than she gives herself credit for it. i like to laugh and joke so uh, i can get serious yeah, yeah, we can get serious sometimes, yeah. man. That's one thing we have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, is that you know there's a time to be for, that, that there's a time to be serious and there's a time to to joke around. Absolutely. So, and we were talking some serious stuff the other night, and that's when she came up with the whole concept of the whole black people having progress, kind of like a hamster in the wheel. Right. And the reason why she says that, and I know exactly the reason why she says it, is because systemic racism is real. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. And the thing of it is, since we didn't start systemic racism, we can't stop it. Mm -mm. We didn't start it. Mm -mm. It's kind of like the Frankenstein monster for those of you who, who, who ever read the book by Mary Shelley Frankenstein. Frankenstein created, Dr. Frankenstein created this monster. Mm -hmm. And once he created this monster, he just discarded the monster. Mm -hmm. And so the monster came back and to get back at him, and he took that what what and he took what Frankenstein held near and dear to him, which was his wife at the time. Right. And so now Frankenstein created this monster, but he wanted somebody else to destroy it. Hmm. So and that's pretty much what's going on. So white supremacy is and systemic racism is the Frankenstein monster of the United States that everybody wants us as the as the oppressed to destroy. Wow. That's not fair to us. Not at all. Because we're the victims of said oppression. Right. So how can we destroy it if we didn't, we didn't start it? You know, to me, it all goes back to the original sin that can't be erased, which is slavery. Exactly. You know, it's like, just like I said, same will. Different people, different day, same Yeah, Yep, exactly. I'm I agree sorry, with you it's, just, it's the same. And like we, we do our podcast, other people do their podcast, some people get out there and do the protests, they make up laws, but it's just, it seems like it's get a little better and then we take two steps back. Yeah. You know? But like, yeah. just for instance, when we got the Chauvin verdict, yeah, you, yeah, we got it, yeah, we yeah. got it. But yeah. within those next three to five days, something bad happened. Five people was killed by a police officer. Something bad happened. You know? So. I don't know. Well, I don't know. well, with everything that's going on, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get what I called an old head's opinion on this situation, mm -hmm. because I know for a fact that this isn't just going on just right now. Right. This has been going on for decades. Yes. Since day one. Mm -hmm. So, we as a people have to take that into consideration it's nothing new mm -mm. only thing that's really new right now are the cameras right. i said that a long time ago before this show before i, before I was even doing this podcast mm -hmm. uh the first time when i was doing it alone and i think the podcast is better since i got my co-host over here i do too <laughs> <laughs> but it is it really is better it really is better <laughs> but anyway uh, with that said we It's nothing new. Yeah, to it's me, it's like new. hearing the stories and looking at the videos make us go through the trauma again and again right. and again right. and again. Um, and I'm getting tired of saying I don't know. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I think that's everybody's problem, man. We, we're getting sick and tired of being sick and tired, and that's and that's one thing that that we as 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 black people have to. It's a burden for us to bear, mm -hmm. and we shouldn't have to bear it. 
Not at all. Because, like, again, we didn't start this thing called racism. Mm -hmm. And I want to read something real quick. Hold on, let me put it up real quick. Okay. Uh, when I was talking about the books, the race, orthodoxy in the South, and other mm -hmm. aspects of the Negro question, there was a part in the book that I wanted to read for the people out there to let everybody know this is what we are dealing with, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. It's the race creed of the Southern people. And there's 15 parts to it. Part number one, blood will tell. Now basically what that means is this. If you are of Anglo blood or Teutonic blood, you are superior to everybody else. Mm. That's the way they see it. Mm, okay. okay. Number two, the white race must dominate. <laughs> hmm. Sound familiar? Definitely. Number three, the Teutonic people stands for race purity. Now, what are the Teutonic people? Mm -hmm. Let me explain that to everybody. The, two, the, Teuton, the Teutonic people are people of Germanic descent before Germany became Germany. Mm -hmm. You know, they were really, really barbaric um, and they posed a threat to everybody that was quote unquote civilized in, 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 in Europe at that particular time. Mm -hmm. So they're very barbaric people. Okay, number four, the Negro is inferior and will remain so. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> like I said, everything that's happening to black people right now is not by accident, y'all. Wow. Okay, number five, this is a white man's country. It wasn't at first. Mm -mm. I don't know why they don't think that, but yeah. Well, they do, and that's how they always thought. You know, this is the white man's country. No, it's not your no, country. Not. You just came over here and bogarted your way up in here and took everything from the people that were already here. Keep it 100. That's, they that, stole it. There you go. They that, stole it. I was getting to that. <laughs> I was getting to that. Come now, on. and number two, there were people there were people coming here, black people, mm -hmm. before you even mm -hmm. thought about coming here. Definitely. And that's a, I, I, can, I, I got proof of that. I got all kinds of books I can give you on that one. Right. So... Anyway, and here's number six. This is this is the one that, that, that's really going to ring out. Number six is, let there be no social equality. Hmm. Now, I've said on several shows that white supremacy does not like to share power. Hmm. Here you go right here. Hmm. Okay, here goes, uh, check out number seven. No political equality. Hmm. Come on now. Come on now. Well, they keeping those top seven very prevalent tonight. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. But check out number eight. In matters of civil rights and legal adjustment, give the, give the white man, as opposed to the colored man, the benefit of the doubt. Huh. <laughs> the benefit of the doubt. So, in other words, you know, that's just like, you know, when you're in court, you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. That's a white person. A white per a black person is completely the opposite. You're guilty until you're proven innocent. Mm. Because no matter what you do, they can sit up here and tell me that I'm a suspect in a bank robbery. I'm arrested and in jail. I could be at home with this lady right here, chilling, not anywhere near a bank. Mm -hmm. But because I'm black and they say that I robbed that bank, it's a whole on white and I say so rule. Mm, oh, you guilty because you robbed that bank. Now when I was at home with my fiance, how could I be robbing the bank? Oh no, you guilty. You did it. I know you did it. Prove it. Prove you were there when you. Exactly. Prove you weren't there. Mm -hmm. I got the I got the proof right here. Mm -hmm. She can tell you that. Oh, she's lying for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right then. Okay. And yeah, check out number nine, y'all. This is number nine. And number nine said, in educational policy, let the Negro have the crumbs that fall from the white man's table. Hmm. Not the crumbs. That's what they said. Mm. That's what it says. Mm. 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 Jesus help us. The crumbs. But check out number 10. It gets better. Mm -hmm. Check out number 10. Let there be such industrial education of the Negro as will fit them to serve the white man. Serve. So in other words, a black man can't do anything unless the white man can benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Mm. Wow. Ain't that deep, y'all? Very. Number 11. Only Southerners understand the Negro question. Now, I've heard this one before because I've heard several 
I've read several books about white people talking about, uh, about black people saying that the only person that, only people that can really understand the Negras, that's what they call us, Negras. Negras. <laughs> only, <laughs> only, only white people from the South can understand the Negras. Okay. All right, then. You say so, bro. Okay. What does that even mean? Like... Uh, well, see, back then, during slavery, and here's the funny part, even though most of the slaves came from places like Annapolis, Maryland, which is up north, mm -hmm. the north would sell the slaves to the south. So the north had slaves too, but they would just sell them to the south. Right. Mm -hmm. And so most of the slaves went down south, but the people from the north didn't have too many dealings with the slaves. Mm. So that's why they say that a southerner is the best person to deal with the Negro, mm. with, with the Negro quote-unquote problem. Mm -hmm. Because they have more experience with them. So they say. Hmm. If you think so. Exactly my point. Wow. Okay, and here's number, which brings me to number 12. The 12th one says, let the South settle the Negro question. <laughs> okay. Okay, number 13. The status of peasantry is all the Negro man can hope for if the races are to live together in peace. So, in other words, you, we got to be your manservants and all that other bullshit in order for us to live in peace. <laughs> I'll be your slave, Miss Daisy. <laughs> But here is one that really got to me, number 14. That the lowest white man count for more than the highest Negro. Mm. Now, you remember back back yeah, when Obama was president, mm -hmm. there was this police officer that approached Obama, and he did something very disrespectful to Obama. And Obama pretty much just, you know, being the pimp that he was in, in office, just pretty much just brushed him off. And people got pissed off because he didn't acknowledge that man. Mm -hmm. Now, how many times have you seen Donald J. Trump disrespect black elected officials right in their faces? 24-7? All day, every but day? The, but the President of the United States of the time, Barack Obama, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much just blew this man off and all of a sudden everybody had an issue with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, last one. The above statements indicate the leadings of Providence. In other words, Providence, I'm sorry. Uh, in other words, these are the law because we say it's the law. Okay, that's all I got on that. Do what I say, not what I do. Exactly. I'm, I'm white and I say so, basically. Right. That's pretty much it right there. Right. Mm -hmm. So, that was that. Mm -hmm. So... We have. Let me see if Roxanne's ready. Let me get mom on the phone. She's not ready yet. Okay. Okay. And that was a, a book that they wrote to show that. <laughs> I told you. I told you. People have to understand that, man. That book is 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 a. I should probably got a grandbaby with her. But I told you that um, that book is very is very is is very profound, man. I told you. I told you. Mm. People need to read that book. You know, so they can get the. Sound gist like it'll make you angry. You be like, "What? What? What? What they mean by it? Just mm -mm. it's too much to take, you know? It's exactly. Just too much to even fathom. Let's get the and and for us to be so disrespectful to our own culture, we just sit down and read some of these books and look at some of these I kept documentary. Saying I keep saying and it. You will see what our people went to for us to get where we are now. I don't even. I see keep it. saying it. Hold on, let me get, let me, I'm going to call Dexter. Let me see, because he tried to call in. Hold on, hold on, Dex. No, nah, I'm forgetting to call mom first. Let me call mom first. I'll call Dex later. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. This is why, to me, you know, I just, I enjoy doing this show, because when I be doing my homework and getting ready for it and when I see you things in something. the news you find something. that I feel like it's worth sharing with the audience, I just feel like we all need to know this because it, it, it just make you keep saying, not again. I'm going to call mom. Not again, but yeah. It'll make you want to this. What's that song? Make you want to holler, throw up your hands. Mm. Yep. Mm -mm.
Hey, mom. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? We're good. Hey, mom. You're on the air again. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, we want to get your insight on number one, this whole um, uh, Derek Chauvin uh, verdict. Did you think? Do you think it was fair? And we also want to get your insight on the state of Black America as a whole. Why do we keep every time we take a step forward? Why we why we, why we take a like take three steps back? Yes. Okay, Derek Chauvin. Yeah. We were. And I do say we, we were lucky to be able to get any type of a conviction. Wow, that's... Considering the people that we were trying to convict. Yeah. Don't you agree? Uh, We were just talking about that, and I think my lovely co-host agrees with me. Yes. Yes. Uh, Yeah, we agree. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, as far as, what was the, what was the second question? Uh, how come black people as a whole, when it comes to our progress, once we take one step forward, we got to take three steps back? Mm-hmm. Because every time we take a step forward, the weight of that step is put on us instead of where it should go. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. If, if they are not, and I do say they, I will refer to them as they, if they are not willing to take a step with us and, to, and ask us silly questions like, what are you going to do now? Right. Mm-hmm. How are you going to do it? Right. Well, see, that's a good question when it's, when it's your problem. We, we were just talking about that, Mom, because we had said that, you know, we didn't create this system of racism, so how can we stop it? We didn't right. start it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But the weight of correcting that has always been put back on the black people's shoulders. Mm-hmm. Yep. We can march and yell and scream all we want to, but they still tell us it's our responsibility to fix their problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We don't have we don't have the means to fix their problem. No, we don't. No. Every black person on the planet would have to be a psychologist and we're not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So any more questions? That's it, Mom. We need to get your insight on it because we knew because we knew you were gonna drop some jewels. But yeah, you did. Definitely. Yeah. And I'm glad that we are in agreement. But yes. there is one thing I'd like to say a little bit further. Okay. About black people in general. Okay. The opportunities that black people, young black people, have now far outweigh the opportunities when I was the same age. Ah, and you hate to go. You hate to say, "Well, the way it was in the old days," but that's that's it. The way it was in the old days is not the way it is now. And there are opportunities if the young people would take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, they have to be encouraged to take those advantages. Yep. Now I don't know. Where that encouragement is going is coming from? Mm-hmm. It first off, it should come from their family. From the family, from the home. Exactly. From the home. We mm-hmm. talked about that earlier, Mom, because mm-hmm. I was talking about how back, how back when I was coming up, you always, you know, you always had me doing something that stimulated my brain. Mm-hmm. So, thanks, Mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're back. You're back. You're back. <laughs> but uh, not everybody is so encouraged. Mm-hmm. Right. I've always, I've always been of a mind. If you think you can do it, then you can. All right. you have to do is try. But I don't know what's going on with people. Right. You have to encourage your young people to go forward. Yeah. You have to pat them on the back and say, "Yes, I know you can do this." Mm-hmm. Right. Because the councils at school are not going to do it because they're not you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. The teachers are not going to do it 
because they expect you to fail in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. You're right. Hmm. You're absolutely okay, right. I'm, I'm off my sofa. <laughs> yeah, <I'm just> <laughs> 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 all right mom all right mom as usual you brought it so we definitely, appreciate it definitely you're welcome and you all have a great day you all too right. bye bye mom bye. wow let's, let's get somebody different on here let's, let's it's called it. kim oh yeah 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 let me that's see if she'll deep. answer the phone that's real deep yeah let's get kim on here see if she can get on it Different perspective from different, different yeah. people and different walks of life will be. Yeah. I'd love to hear that. Let's see if she'll pick up. Hello? What's up, Cuzzo? Hey, baby. What you doing? Well, you ain't gonna believe it, but right now I'm uh, packing because our cousin Reba that was living with me, she went into a nursing home. So ah. I'm uh, packing because I'm moving into my apartment in Houston. Oh, you're going back to H Town? Yep. All right, Qu- real quick, cuz we got you on the air. We want to ask you a couple of questions. Hey, Dad. Hey, how you doing? Do you want who is that? <laughs> Is here? Hey, cuz, you here? I'm here. Okay, good. Oh, what do you think about this jo- this this, uh, this uh, Derek Chauvin uh, verdict? You think it was fair? The verdict, I think it's, it's fair. I don't know about whether or not the amount of time he's going to do is going to be fair right. until I see that. Mm-hmm. Right. He should. He was guilty. He should be in jail. Right. And. I have zero S for him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. I had to clean that up, but I have none left for him. Cuz, let me tell you something. Cuz, let me tell you something. I mean, Mimi can tell you right now. I cuss on this show all the damn time, so say whatever the hell you want to say. Be <laughs> Parker's, damn it. Say what you got to say. <laughs> yeah, I already know, baby. Parker forever. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Precisely. Precisely. Say what you got to say, Cuz. You do you. Not shit. I wish. They could take his life like he took that man's life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I have no zero, no fucks for him left. If they don't get, all right, then I'll be mad. He deserves the very the highest of that they can give him. Mm-hmm. So yes, forty years wouldn't be wouldn't mm-hmm. hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. All right, cuz, second and final question. You know, what do you think about the state of black people right about now? I think some of us mm-hmm. are waking up. I think more of us need to wake up. Mm-hmm. But there's some that we'll never be able to get. Um, I am proud of the, the millennials because we were too passive with our aggression. Mm-hmm. I they agree. came out and showed us how you really be mad Mm -hmm. right so i appreciate the millennials for teaching us that it's time to get off our asses Mm -hmm. and stop marching and start doing Mm -hmm. exactly Exactly, exactly. Because I've said it several times on this show, because that, you know, uh, the master teacher, Dr. John Henry Clark, said this, and he said this a lot of times. He said, the only thing marching does is ruin good shoe leather. That's all it does. That's all it does. Mm. That's all it does. We have to stop marching. I say, just like they did at the state capitol, turn up their shit. <laughs> <laughs> now leave our shit alone. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Tear up their shit. Come on now. Mm-hmm. That's the only time they seem to understand or want to say something is when their shit is messed up. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mess up their world. There you go, cuz. Yeah, that's true. Say that. That is so okay. true. Yes. I have a whole lot to say about us in as a black community. We got to stop being so doggone passive and, and start doing right. Quit turning up your own shit for some damn shoes. And go tear up that shit. Mm-hmm. Come on, cuz. I tell you what, cuz, say that for next week's show. All right? I got you, baby. <laughs> yeah, say it for next week's show. I'll definitely give you a buzz back. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. Hi, Mimi. 
Hey, hey you? love, how are you? Uh, good, boo. I can't wait to see you again. I know. Is my puppy ready? Has she been born yet? <laughs> That's right. Well, I will be here, cuz, waiting to speak. And I have your cousin, Latavia. She will also be waiting to speak. Of course. Mm. And you know, hun, you and her, y'all... Y'all, y'all got them real good minds, so y'all, y'all think alike. Oh yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. That's my little cousin. I love her to death. Yeah, yeah. So you know what I tell you? You my my genius when I have to go to them on anything. So she's just like you. So yeah, we'll be ready. Cool. That's, nice. that's what's up. That's what's up. But nice. anyway, cuz, thank you for the jewels. We appreciate it. All right, boo. I love you. All right, love you too, cuz. Bye. All right, bye. bye. All yeah. right. Two for two. Kim keeping it away. Already. Let me see if we get Dex him. on here. Yeah. See if we can get to him. I know he tried to call. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, Dexter. Let's get Dexter. Let's see if he back up. Dex. Let's see if we can get him on here. If he can pick up, he might be at work. Oh yeah. Work, oh, cool. I didn't know it was this late. Wow, we've been having a good little old time today. Yeah, actually, we have. It's a pretty good little show. Mm-hmm. Let's see if we can pick up. No, he ain't gonna pick up. Yeah, work. Right. Yeah, I know he said he go to work about this time. Yeah. Welcome to the USA. Okay. Yeah, it worked. Mm -hmm. We'll get to him later. But anyway. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Good, good show, babe. Yes, sir. Always. Of course, man. Always. Yeah. Like I said, we haven't been on the air a while, but it seemed like we covered everything so far, and it, it was a lot. Oh, yeah. But I think everything that we spoke about needed to be discussed. I agree. I agree. Discuss. I agree because um, you know there's a whole lot more to discuss, mm -hmm. but we don't have the time for it because we know people. We've been here. We've been on here for over two hours. Wow! Now. I didn't even know that. So uh, we'll we can we can we'll save some for next week's show because mm -hmm. I know something bad is going to happen again. <laughs> it always does. Oh yeah. If always. it don't, it'll surprise me. It'll surprise the hell out of me too. Well, two things I want to do mention okay. today makes the tenth year anniversary of the killing of Osama bin Laden. Do you remember where you were ten years ago when that took place? Yeah. Yeah, I was. I had just moved to Dallas. Mm, okay. I hadn't been long moved here mm -hmm. to Dallas, man. And were you uh, scared of retaliation? No, nah, I wasn't really scared because, to be honest with you, I mm. felt indifferent about the situation. Mm. Um, because the killing of Osama bin Laden didn't either help nor hurt the black community. Mm. So that's why I felt kind of indifferent about the situation. Mm. So you know, I, I was, I was, you know, I was like, yeah, okay, you got him. You should have got him a long time ago because, like, you the ones created him anyway. Again, going back to the Frankenstein monster syndrome. You know, the U.S. created the Taliban hmm. and Al Qaeda. They we created them because okay. they had a whole because because over there in Afghanistan, you know, they were fighting the Afghan war over there. Mm -hmm. Created them. They got they got military. They showed them everything they need. Oh, I see what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So just, you, oh, the Frankenstein. Yeah, he turned them. I there you go. It the takes me a monster. minute, but I get it. See, there you go. Okay, There you yeah. go. The whole Frankenstein monster syndrome. There you Taught go. Taught them everything. They didn't turn it on you. Wow. Exactly. Mm. So do you think it's fair for him to try to pull all the troops out? Or do you think once they've learned that we're all gone, they're going to start back up? To be honest with you, they should have pulled those troops out once that war was over officially in the first damn place, which was like in the late, which is like the mid to late 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know we had the Gulf War, mm -hmm. you know back then, and they had some troops over there. And uh, once they had the Gulf War during the '90s, I had a couple. I had a few cousins in that Gulf War. Wow! And um, they all came out with all their limbs intact. Right. But mm. they still had that. A lot. One of them had that, you know, post-traumatic war syndrome, or whatever you want to call that, PTSD. Mm -hmm. PTSD. So, mm -hmm. PTSD, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, and he was he was having some issues with that, mm -hmm. and the military drug defeat about giving getting him some help on that, and that's another show we can do too. Definitely, we definitely got to do that show. I just realized that you don't even have to be in the war. No, you don't. And you I can suffer like, from that. What? So that's, that's right. A good story. I mean, a good show to have. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So Coincide we'll talk about that. Mental, mental health. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Let me write that down. Yes, indeed. Write that down. <laughs> that's, that'd be a really good show. Yeah. I think that'd be a really good show. 
So, okay. Yeah. But other than that, babe, I think this show was heavy hitted, heavy latent, and it's too bad. Very provocative. I agree. Not provocative. Very thought provoking. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I hate. I hate that Roxanne didn't call in. She, but she probably got a grandbaby with her, which okay. is cool. Okay. Next uh, week, she can always tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next week. Next week. Yeah. Definitely do it next week. I miss our Coco host. Yeah, I know it's it, man. They were busy. Oh, yeah, they are, yeah. yeah. Like, more likely than not, they were. So, you know, that happens. But we'll get them next week, of course. Yeah, we'll get them next week, definitely, man. So, you know, we had a really, 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 really good show Well, let today. me ask you this before we go. I know we've yeah. been on here a little windy, but one more thing. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling about the state of the culture we're in? I've never asked you that. You know what? I'm just going to be honest with you, babe. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have come a long way, mm-hmm. but we still got a long ways to mm-hmm. go. We got a long ways to go. Mm-hmm. I mean, the one thing that, I, that I've always hated about us as pe- as a people is that we let petty differences split us apart. Mm-hmm. We let stuff like the difference in religion split split us apart. Mm-hmm. The difference in sexual orientation split us apart. Mm-hmm. You know, and the difference in political affiliation definitely split us apart. Mm-hmm. Always. So I think that once we get on code. When some of us are getting on code, a lot of us, just like Kim said, a lot of us more are waking up, which means we're more, more, more of us are getting on code. Mm-hmm. Once we get on code, the sky's the limit. Yes. There's nothing that we can't do as a people, and we know that. Mm-hmm. But again, white supremacy has that whole divide and conquer mentality. Mm-hmm. Once they get that divide and conquer mentality, man, you know they can keep us divided by our petty differences, like I just stated before. Mm-hmm. They're going to conquer us because we're divided as a people. Mm. They'll say, okay, this guy right here is a Muslim. Okay, Christians and Muslims don't really get along, which is bullshit. Right. And then you got these these guys over here, the Hebrew Israelites. Okay, mm-hmm. he's a Hebrew Israelite. He thinks the Christians are stupid and the Muslims are even more stupid. Mm. Okay, so now you got, you, got, you got those three factions fighting. Then you got these people over here. Oh, he's an atheist. He don't believe in God at all. Right. And he thinks all of y'all are stupid. Right. So what are you going to do about that? You know what I mean? And then you got these guys over here. Uh, you got the uh, you got the liberals and you got the conservatives. They don't like each other. No. Okay? And then you got these guys over here. Oh, he's a straight black man. He's a gay black man. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, all, it's a whole divide and conquer thing. They credit crab in a barrel. Really? Exactly. They're Pretty much crabs in the barrel. Crab in the barrel. So, Oh, if I ain't getting out, you ain't getting You're out either. Getting Come exactly, on. yeah. Right. So, you know, and that's and that's not fair. No. So, but once we all get on the same page, mm-hmm. the sky's the limit. Well, babe, it's been 400 years. I agree. 400 like plus I said, years. And like I said, and again, like I said, it's that whole divide and conquer mentality. Mm-hmm. Once we get past that, we'll, we'll be all right. I think if we get to that mentality like they had in the 60s, like with the boycott, just stop doing, stop giving them that dollar. If we stop that dollar... Hit them in the pocketbook. I think we'll I've see always a said difference. that, baby. I have always mm-hmm. said that. Once you hit them in that pocketbook, mm-hmm. oh man, come on, mm-hmm. come on. Hit them in that pocketbook. Yeah, but until that time, we'll get some act be, right then. What you say? We just you gotta uh, stay woke. Is that you gonna stay woke? woke? Stay woke. Wake your ass up. Don't be fooled by the devil, people. And that was the whole premise behind that movie, uh, School Days. Mm-hmm. A lot of people didn't get that. Once, oh, once, uh, T, big T. exactly. <laughs> I love him. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of people didn't really get that. I mean, when at the end of the movie, when um, when 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 Lawrence Fishburne was saying, "Wake up, wake up," yeah, that's Definitely. what he meant by that. Yeah. And look how many. Oh man, that came out when I was. We was. I was, was still I in high, high school. school? Yeah. <laughs> I remember when it came out. I was still in high school. Came out what? 86, 87, mm-hmm. somewhere along in there. Mm-hmm. And it's still prevalent today. It's still prevalent to this very day. But we as people have to wake up because, like, no matter how you slice it, white supremacy still sees us as one thing and one thing only, and that's niggas. I mean, put our petty differences aside and all that good stuff, man, we'll be just fine because I don't give a damn what God you pray to or how you pray to him. It's all the same God. It's all, trust me, it's the same damn God because, <laughs> it, because, the because, that reli- because those religions came from the same source, same Africa, mechanism, that's okay? Right. They just, just call God a different name, mm-hmm. okay? Just That's all of this to it. So just put yeah. that crap aside and, you know, as far as somebody's sexual orientation is concerned, Sleep with whoever, whoever, or whatever you want to sleep, but that's your business. Absolutely. I don't need to know all that. Absolutely. I could care less. Don't care. You know, I I know who I'm sleeping with right here. So, you know, that's all there is to it. You know. So, but still, I don't care about nobody else. No. 
it shouldn't matter. It should, all that is not even relevant. No, it's what not. What we gonna do? We can get our reparations. Thank you. Get our same equal equality across the board. Thank you. And regardless of pay and jobs, treatment Thank by the you. police, whatever. Say that. That's what's most important. Say that again. Who are you kissing? Who are you gonna serve the Lord with? Who who are you talking to on the phone? I don't care. I really don't care. Who you talking to on the phone? Who you voted for? Don't nobody care. Don't nobody care. I could care less about that. Because so many people jump in political ships anyway. One day you tell me you're a plug, now you tell me you're considering, now you're independent. Okay, we need to pick a side. Really? Pick a side. I just don't vote no more. Thank you. Exactly my point. That's my whole point. You said everything I just said. It just just condensed it all right there. I made it more uh, thug like. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. Because you know you try to do things. You know you try to be the prim and the proper. Sometimes you want people to tell people, man, just shut the fuck up and do what this need to be done. Hello. I mean, forgive me for because I did. Just sometimes you just want to say that because some people be like, well, you know. And I'm not talking about nobody but us right now. Mm. Us. Us is black people. Us is black people. We will just bring. We have so many sob stories, right? And I'm not talking about. I, I can put my stuff in that category too. Just like Kim was saying, I can get up there and do some more. I can get on the phone and call some more. I can be more forthright with people. But we need to all get on one accord. Though we all can be backbiting and fighting each there other. We'll never be having anything if we don't come together. There you go. That's it. And again, like I said, the house in the wheel. When are we going to start? Yep. When is it going to start? There you go. Right, me, I'm like I'm like Mr. Let me get myself out. <laughs> no, you said it, man. You said it. I'm loving it. Cause it's, I'm loving it's, it. It's getting old. I'm loving you know, it. We 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 this been going on for 400 plus years. You know, it's like I keep looking out for my features. It's gonna be anything. I, I want to have a successful senior citizen years. But it's like I'm be working till I'm like dirt, dirt, dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to work one day I'm going to die I'm going to be in the body That's how I feel sometimes Pretty much It's getting to that level now man Jesus But But anyway Wow Good show baby Absolutely I like the ending <laughs> And to, to To clean up the show To make it night nice, Today is National Lemonade Day So go ahead and get you A fresh squeeze of lemonade Come on now yeah. I love lemonade. Me too. I love lemonade. Yes, me too. Yes. But good show. So people please remember to subscribe. Subscribe, hit that like button. Notifications. Hit the, hit the, hit the notification. Know we're on live. All that. And always remember, have your thoughts, any show topics you would like for us to discuss. By all means. Let us know or just call into the chat line on the next air date and let us know if there's anything you want to discuss. Just just this is a time for you to share your thoughts. No no stupid answers, no stupid topics. This is a not say how you feel. Right. This is a non-judgmental zone. If you cuss like Reggie, cuss like Reggie. Oh, <laughs> you know, just say how you feel. Nobody will judge you how you talk or what you say. Really though, I you mean, know. you know, I got a, I got a heavy Oklahoma accent. She got a she got a North Texas accent. You so know. hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. I don't care. So you know, that's just the way it is. So right. we'll be all right. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. And we're back, so hopefully we'll be going strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to be, we, we're going to be we're a little bit more consistent, strong. y'all. Yeah. Uh, things happen, people. Exactly, things, things, happen. things happen. And I think that since it's going to be Mother's Day next weekend. Mm, truly is. Yeah, we'll mm-hmm. be out about, so we're going to have a show this weekend. No, you see, I just said we <laughs> just said we back and we'll probably be out next week, so yeah. But that's okay, though. That's yeah. okay, though. You know, yeah. more likely than not, we'll probably do a show in the middle of the week. Well, yeah, yeah, that'll be okay. It'll work because, like I said, you need to have time to enjoy time with your mothers, people. Yes. If your mother is still above the dirt, please show her much love. It ain't all about the gifts. Sometimes, it, some do want gifts, but some want time. Yeah, a lot of them do. A lot, of, a lot of them. That's pretty much what they want. Mm-hmm. They want. They don't want. They, they, they don't want gifts. Mm-hmm. They don't want. You know all the other crap. They just want to see their children, right? And make sure the children are still above ground, ten toes like, down. In your case, you stay in a different state, so just to come home, exactly. So she can throw some love on you, put her eyes on you, touch you, exactly. Hug you. Yeah, exactly. That's, That's pretty want. much what it's all about. That's you know, it's, it's not about buying gifts all the mm-hmm. time. You know, like I said, you know, a lot of time they just want to know that you're still above ground That's and ten right. toes down. That's all. You can tell her anything on the phone, but she needs to precisely. She wants to see you. She, she wants to be able to reach eyes. out and touch you. You know, so just if you got mothers above the ground, by all means, go see them. Absolutely. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Yes, out indeed. There. In the meantime, I'm Reggio. And I am Mimi the Lady. And we out, y'all. Bye.